call the meeting to order at 631. Let's turn my phone off so that we don't get this real quick. Uh, Rosemary's on a cruise. Oh, oh I forgot she's in there. Oh, what happened to that? He's on a cruise? Yeah. I think that's where she's at. She's on vacation. I think it's I think this one includes a cruise. Are there any additions or adjustments to the agenda? Uh, I, I tested one. negative all weekend. But I just was near somebody last week. week. Beth, what did I I I raised something you said bring it up under select board concerns? Does that need to be Add it to the agenda? No, or? it can be under a select board concerns. So okay. That's okay. I hope you remember what it was because I forgot. As soon as you said it, I'm like, yeah, I did say that to you. Uh, I do remember what it was, but the share was just the end. There you go. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Perfect. Is yeah. that thing still on next Monday, the housing? Uh, no, it was close to October. That's what I thought. Um, additions, Brian? Uh, I have a, actually a removal, uh, okay. item number oh. four. Uh, for signing a certificate of authority, uh, we were able to resolve that um, kind of asserting our the chair's right to sign documents on behalf of the tenant. Perfect. I love removal of items. I have a proposed adjustment. I bring right. item 11 up to item number three just because it's committee support and they want to be here all night. Yep. Sure. Is that ever? Been done successfully. Not we'll get there at, at 7 50 the on the dot. So we'll talk about that one, Mark. But thanks for asking. Okay. <laughs> Any other adjustments or, or uh, additions? Okay, not seeing any. Let's go through orders. Oh, Rosemary's not here. Um, uh, you have. I guess I have. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay. Acadia Lagu for dance class gymnastics, $437.50. All things asphalt, asphalt fill, um, $1,250. Jen Burton Community Oven, $79.56. Chloe Bol uh, Bolio, Gymnastics, $90. City card payment for beautification in the amount of $126.14. Tuesday Night Live in the amount of $193.79. Tech services, $94.99. Um, due from the village, $94.99. Grant fund purchase purchases four hundred and twenty six dollars and seventeen cents. Mark has a squeaky chair. Postage one hundred and sixty six dollars and ninety five cents. Building maintenance and repairs supplies forty dollars and forty three cents. Programs twenty two dollars and forty six cents for a total of one thousand one hundred and sixty five dollars and ninety two cents. Library phone. Internet, that's probably normal, but I'll say it anyway. 5253, Historical Society phone, internet 11191. Uh, Lisa Cruz, Cultivator, $252.26. Emily Stern, Soccer, $100. I assume that's for wrapping. Um, Fisher Auto Parts, Connector, 6526. Um, Gaia Megan Gymnastics, $135. Gorman Group Summer Calcium, $13,699. You guys can stop me if you have questions about anything. Great Big Graphics Sign and Design Acquisition, $979.55. Um, Donna Griffiths uh, Skate Park Minutes, $53.90. Ingram Books on Tape. $720.41 and grant fund purchases of $73.01 for a total of $793.42 to uh, Ingram. Green Lantern Solar Monthly Electric, um, a total of 
$850.20, of which $136.36 was due from Holcomb for Holcomb. What was that again? Um, Green Lantern Solar Monthly Electric. Oh, and it was divided up between. <clears throat> Johnson Hardware and Rental, a blade slash bit 5193, Q796, uh, rope clip 1180, smoke detector 159.96, uh, screws, nuts, bolts 996 for a total of $241.61, Megan Kayla Gymnastics $440. Lamoille Family Center Appropriations, $2,000. Tax overpayment to Daryl Mansfield, $378.52. Menashe Sand, a total of $2,406.27. Kyle Noose Beautification Committee, $276.34. And Kyle Noose Community Oven, $2817 for a total of $304.50. Priority Express loan payment, $87.04. Uh, RL Valley Fuel, $45.20. Rabbit Tracks Mowing Transport, $775. State Park, uh, it looks like it's available to Casey Romero, $631.98. Sandy Hill overpayment for tax overpayment, sorry, $163.08. It's end of the year, can we tell? Uh, Stitzel's Page and Fletcher um, Storage General, $6,746.60. Still Reporter Tax Grievance Notices, $98.50. Uh, TD Bank credit card payment accounts payable, um, $3,247.37. There's a bunch of other accounts listed here. I'm not really sure why. There's wood, wood fired oven listed, miscellaneous expense, and professional training. They don't have amounts allocated to them though. So it almost looks like there's just a general credit card payment made up of those three, thing, three things, but we don't see the breakout. So if you want me to pull the invoice, I can. Um, Kyle Phillips tax overpayment, $663.68. Um, Village Electric for Skate Park, $25.41. Lights, heat tape, $48.23. Sinclair Road, lights, street lights, uh, $67.24. Four Library Street, electricity, $68.86. School Street Legion Field, electricity 3454, and then uh, 780 Railroad Street 2658, two from a village and 2658 paid. Um, that's water. Seth Yacovoni, TNL Performance $500, and then Community Oven paid to Jasmine Uris uh, 9458. Hmm. Well, quite a few individuals identified that were paying directly. Have you been sharing with them that our preferred method? We have been, and uh, I'm pretty confident about at least a couple of those that we have. I'm not exactly sure what those payments were for without a little bit more background about the, the particular instances, but I, I know that we worked on this very recently with uh, you know, Jen Burton and uh, that's, at least another one about is this the community of them on that's the community of them. Uh, and she's Complying with everything, it can't be too. Yeah, I heard community Wait. oven, I heard skate park, I heard uh, beautification. Uh, I mean, this one. Tax and I, I see what you're saying. Um, we do have receipts, and the other is it, there's a number of people listed like um, Kayla Megan, Gaia Megan, and Chloe. Uh, don't know Chloe's last name, and also Emily Emily uh, Stearns, for example. Um, I know some of those kids, and I know that they're being paid to help with recreation. 
Is there anything specifically you want to pull, Eric? No, no, it was just a general statement that we had, you know, just gave it out that we wanted individuals not to be getting reimbursed unless it's a but use a town account unless it's a timely thing that has to be purchased. And it seems like two of them here from all different committees, too. Motion to approve orders. Can we have a motion to a second? Yep. We have a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Nice kind of um, review and approve minutes from August 1st. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Um, any discussion? I would like to abstain from voting on the minutes. Yep. Okay. The motion is like uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, ayes have it. And uh, all those opposed and abstain. abstain. Okay. Um, select board issues and concerns. Says me. Yep. Okay. Um, Are you the issue or the concern? Uh, quite possibly both, <laughs> depending on your perspective. <laughs> Probably both. Um, I was approached by a uh, citizen with. Um, two requests. One was that we um, paint the Sharrows on Railroad Street. You know what I mean by Sharrows? Uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What um, are they? The, the bike, the bike uh, 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 symbols, the share of the road symbols on, I see. Okay. on yep. Railroad Street. Mm -hmm. And the other was um, that in, I got this from um, Jim at Lamoille Bike Tours. He's getting a lot of people parking in his space who are really rail trail riders and not customers. Um, and he said Greg Tatro is getting a lot of the same in front of the, the old um, after building. Um, and he was hoping that we would consider putting up a sign at the intersection of the rail trail and the rest street. That's a directional sign that basically says Old Talcona Park and rail trail parking with an arrow ahead. So that was, that's the request. I see you put up signs that say customer parking only or anything like that. Have you tried to actively do this or you just want the town to pay for everything? Um, I know that he has, he actually had one person park and block the entire road um, so that nobody could get into his business. Um, and they jumped out of the car and left. Um, so that one he wasn't able to. I, I don't know. I don't remember seeing signs. Um, but I think it's entirely reasonable for us to think about putting up a, a directional sign for Telcom Park and Rail Trail Parking. So that's. I would advocate for doing that, but to the board. Sounds like a good idea to me. There's a couple signs that we put up a couple years ago that say where the old mill park is, you know, it's like it points you right to the area, but I know what he's talking about. Uh, there was a couple hours later that pulled right onto the rail trail and parked in the <laughs> yeah, walk the whole front. <clears throat> Maybe it would be more effective to put up your car will be towed at owner's expense. <laughs> right. uh, no I, was group, huh? I was thinking no parking might be more effective. Yeah. Um, so we have a few, few people in agreement. Do we want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to um, approve uh, painting in the shadows on, on the schedule and to install a directional sign at the intersection of the rail trail and railroad street, which would read Tuckman Park and the rail trail with an arrow ahead. You want to say parking? Parking. parking. Also. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Old Mill Park, 
I well, guess should be we... separate. No. Uh, okay, what, which part of that is your motion then? Well, rail trail parking and old mill park. Okay. The directional arrow. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A second. Any discussion? Are you committed to the language or not? Uh, I'm, if you've got a suggestion for more clarified language, I'm totally open to the suggestion. I don't, I've got you, I've got a short kind of notes version of this. And I was just going to ask you to take your time repeating it so you copy it down word for word. You wanted to make sure it appeared word for word. We'll We're okay it. with. We'll get it in Don. We'll get it in Donna's notes because you have it word for word in the motion. Well, I guess what I have is just separate sign, Old Hill Park and Rail Trail Park. Ahead, is that what you had in mind, or do you want? Yeah. Yeah. Old Mill Park and Rail Trail and, and Park. Is it on the word ahead, or just like an arrow? I think just an arrow is fine. I mean, those signs were painted by the by the letter and by the square inch, so. The smaller we can make it while still being readable. While we're while we're doing science, we should did, replace. Did we get a second? You yeah, always second. Okay, we second. Okay, sorry. I think we should replace the sign on the on Powerhouse Bridge. Because I put that sign up there myself years ago. And it's decaying. If you can believe that. Yes. Yes, because people stole the, the iron, the, the enamel one that was up there forever. And the select board didn't put a sign up, so I just went and did it. That would be different than the active motion we have. So if you'd like yeah. to follow it up, that would be totally okay. fine. So I can't remember. You could, you could ask for a friendly <laughs> amendment, I suppose. I was going to ask for one. <laughs> You're going to ask for yeah. As long as they're spending money on the board. Go for it. You can ask for friendly amendment. By all means. Friendly amendment that replaces the sign that's decaying on the uh, powerhouse bridge with. Which one. currently reads powerhouse bridge. Yes. And is it on the on the hundred C side or the yes, on the hundred C side? And it's decaying. It's a little rough. I notice every time I drive here. Is it is the current one wood or? Yes, no. it's a piece of plywood. Yeah, and is your suggestion? That we replace that with a standard. With, with something, uh, something that, that almost the same size because the original I did the same same size as two foot by two foot I think with a trim around it. I tried to copy the. Might want to take there. some pictures and There's draw plenty of pictures. The floor, there are a lot of pictures of board. this particular sign. So if you're getting that detail, you should just have something that says. This is what I just I want, want to mimic the original. Just like the original. Is that a friendly yeah. amendment? I, I'm, I'm, I'm amenable if the seconder is. Yes. Okay, we have a friendly amendment. What's Are you good, second? Donna? I, I guess, do you do you want it to just say that you want to replace the sign that says powerhouse bridge, or do you want to specify that it should be about two feet by two feet? Or should be re replace the sign that exists on powerhouse bridge with another identical size sign with Order. Did you also have a friendly amendment? Would you accept an amendment to the sign on Railroad Street that replaces it only after 60 days of the current issued landowner putting up their own signs, making it clear so taxpayers aren't paying for this problem willy nilly? I, I get where you're going with that. Um, I still think it's reasonable for a directional sign there. Probably for or, all of our parks and town owned land. That's where you're going with it. Yeah. So, no, I'm not amenable to that as a friend. And I would question that if the property owner could place signs where you're referencing because it's probably within our right away. It also might be within the, well, the rail, rail trip right away. 
one of the other businesses figured it out, but apparently this one can't. But no parking for apparently. But we didn't accept my sentiment. Sorry. Okay, yep. So we have a we have a uh, motion on the floor. Any further discussion? All, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Uh, uh, eyes have it. Okay. Any other issues or concerns? Okay, treasurer's reports. So Rosemary is out. So we're going to have to do a full end of year uh, at our next meeting. Uh, we do have some idea, and Rosemary included on. Get a package number on it for some reason. Yeah, and it comes after yeah. page four. Yep. Uh, right. um, that details uh, what looks like our, our cash on hand at the close of the year, uh, giving us a about uh, $200,000. Um, we've got some questions uh, still in this on uh, paving, money that was dedicated to paving last year. Um, so that might be considerably less. So is that is that 205 inclusive of what was set aside for paving last year? That's what our, what my question is. And Rosemary and I, between our schedules this week, didn't have time to answer that to either of our satisfaction. Uh, so you... I'm just giving you a warning that that might be resolved, but even if this is resolved, um, you know, the paving project was going to come out of last year's money and this year's money. So it's, not like we can, we're not anywhere near wiping out the whole two hundred thousand dollars. So we might be a hundred thousand instead of two hundred. And the outside, yeah. we could be, you know, we might have this might go down by close to a hundred thousand dollars. Have we received the paving invoice? We have not. No. Well, we can do it next meeting. We'll, we'll go into more detail next week. Yeah. I would love to see um, yourself and Rosemary. This is this is a great list. I I would love to see what you just identified, whether that is in fact the case, and whatever balance is left, perhaps some recommendations from you and Rosemary on where the board might want to target those yeah. items. We'll absolutely have that ready for, for next meeting. I think these are the recommendations. Uh, these are the polls. Those were the proposed. Reservation in the budget. Well, yeah. And that's that still potentially leaves 205. Or not. Yeah, depending no. on the payment. But it, it could, you know, we could be talking about 100 grand, which is that's true. real yeah. money. We'll know when she's back. Okay. Any other questions on where we are? I mean, I think that's the big thing, right? That we're just bringing up is that any paving. Have we asked for an invoice? Uh, I don't think we've asked for an invoice that they haven't done any work yet. Uh, Do we have any idea when they are scheduled or are they scheduled? They're trying to get us in if they can get in, like we talked about, uh, doing it for whether current or not, currently first on the schedule for the spring. So if they don't, we put in our RF and our acceptance of their RFP that we wanted it complete by the end of October, I believe, or mid-October, one of the two. I don't remember offhand what we said the it deadline was Definitely the date of October was referenced. We set a deadline and they said that they would uh, hold the cost proposed if it had to be moved to the spring. And they agreed with our deadline as you know a cutoff point. Okay. So, yeah, they won't they won't be charging us extra if it gets bumped to the spring, and they won't be trying to do it in 
foul weather in the <coughs> or something. We're, we're still in good shape, but we have not been able to fit into their schedule yet. So, okay. Uh, okay. Anything? Any other questions? Anything else for Treasurer's report, Ray? No, I think that's all I've got. Yeah, we're closing out the end of the year. And we'll tell them, but we've got a little bit more fine tuning to make sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, Jason, you're up next. Good evening. How's it going? Good. How are you? Uh, so we completed the uh, room. Uh, did you get the culvert? Sand and all the roadside one more time for the year. The last time. I think this is on the rail trail. You mowing the rail trail is completed. Yep. Yeah, the total number of hours that was 32. 32 hours. Now's the time now. Go ahead and make the motion. I'll second it. A motion to send a bill for the state for $150 an hour of town work on state right away. That's 32, not an on-real 32 hours. No, no, I, I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All the, uh, any discussion? Um, is this a smart thing to do? Tell me you're thinking about this. I think I that the select board is picking favorites in terms of outdoor recreation and maintaining right of ways that are not ours. And we need to be impartial and treat all outdoor recreation the same. There's plenty of other outdoor recreation in this town, the Long Trail. That's another right of way that the town doesn't own. There's plenty of other clubs I can keep going if you want. But the state owns the right of way. The state put it in. And the state is making the taxpayers of this town pay to maintain it. And what are they doing with the rest of the, the rest of the towns? Are they filling also? If we don't need to copy what every other town does. I'm asking a question. I don't. I don't know of a single other town that is filling the state yet. I, I will say that the. Starting this year, the state is committed to mowing, uh, mowing the rail trail. They have not yet set how often the schedule is going to look like. We may not be mowing again in the future, but it, it, they are now contributing to that. This is how they can contribute. Yep. Okay. So, the motion and a second. Any other discussion? Just say, I think it sends a statement, but I wouldn't hold their breath to check the community. No, we're not going to check it. We won't yeah. hold the annual books open for that one. I would leave my okay. I just think it's think not it. wise to bite the hand that feeds it. I think Jason had something to say. One question I have a chance to this building, but not so previous years we moved, we moved, we got the area. Earlier than we did, but some things came up with permits and stuff. So, what I would like to look for is scheduling purposes for us somehow to figure out with the state if we're moment, we are just way I can schedule it. We can have the permit and everything. So, we have the downtime and run the week we were going to do it. We did it in the schedule a little here. Yep. Just, I don't know if they're going to, I know Brian, me and Brian talked about it. I don't know if the state can get a better plan. Probably depends on where they're, you know, if it's the district that's going to take responsibility, it's probably a reasonable expectation that it's going to be handled by the rails division. 
for employment prep? I think it's a good question though, Jason. And um, it seems to me that after we un get a better understanding, before we get a better, better understanding in the spring, we can ask that question and get permit requests out if we are going to. That way we just have them in case we need it. That way you can work, work on your own schedule, not on somebody else's. Yeah, you know, I seconded the motion and I support the concept, knowing full well that the state is not going to pay us and we'll get a nice letter back. I understand and appreciate what you're saying, Mark, is, is it worth making an issue or the many other things that we get from V Transit is not, uh, we don't pay for it. Um, so my, my comment would be, we shouldn't make a big deal out of that. If they don't pay us, we should graciously move on and say thanks. Find out what everybody wants very soon. Are we ready to vote? Yeah. Okay, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? No. Okay, ayes have it. Um, what else is going on, Jason? Uh, just to give you guys some information, our road we took 87 fan forms off. So far, our column still has been up for two. I think we've done the best decision stuff. And then I reached out to the gap that filled the gap. And uh, he's uh, September 20th is when it's supposed to be finished up. And then it has to ship across the sea between four to two weeks. And then we'll tell how the one to two weeks to get it everything from over to finish our trip. Then we should see it November 4th by a week or two. Did he, um, I'm curious about the shipping. Did he mention or seem like he wasn't convinced the two week was realistic in the shipping port? No, he gave me um, an extended time. He said it could go faster through being at the port for two weeks. That's what he would think would be a safe number. I told him I want to be on a conservative side until I get the numbers. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. When you say shipping port, where is it coming from? Brazil. Brazil? You know, that's what. And they feel very confident of the date it will be at dock. He does. I mean, he said it would be, he feels, as the other day when I spoke to him, very confident that it should be finished up on the 20th. And it's going to be two weeks on the water, two weeks at the port. He was thinking one week, but we called it two to make it. I guess the only thing that makes me nervous is you know, you hear these horror stories on shipping and boats not only able to unload and same guy. There's a lot of worst cases. I'm looking at it last half full. Like, it all works out. Okay, I, I hope it does. And uh, as far as my report, I think that's it for this section of it. But it looks like we're going to touch base on the whole one thing a little bit later. Yeah. And touch base into that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, what is the upcoming grant work? Uh, one way you lay, and you got the counter signing the agreement today. Yep. Uh, you know, I haven't read all the way through it, but I, I did receive it. We received back the countersigned documentation for the better road grant for Road Ledway Lane. Uh, we're still working on uh, the Fox Lot, uh, the, the final approval for Fox Lot, but I spoke to individuals about that uh, on 
Thursday or Friday of last week. Uh, so that I think will be turned around pretty quickly. So we're not working on it, we're waiting on it, correct? Bonk sauce, we're waiting on it. Ledwood will actually be working. Okay. Uh, and that excavator rental goes to a couple different yeah. sites. So we have to do we have to do Fox Lot before October or before the end of October. The plan was to finish Collins and Maple by September 1st. And if we haven't got it finished, we're going to move off that and do the grant work to complete it by October 1st. And then we're going to go back and do, if we have to finish Collins and Maple, then uh, we'll build on the schedule. Remember to find clarification on Lenway Lane class classification. If, if the state's providing a grant, then they're recognizing it as a class three. It doesn't go beyond what they recognize. The this section does not go beyond what's commonly recognized as uh, class three, the work that they're doing now. Uh, we, we have to go out and do some measurements and compare them to the maps and get, get more specific about. Uh, does our mileage match what was agreed to work for that? Just over road discussions. There's a town highway number, I can't remember it. It's up uh, class four off from Moyne Road. Yes. It's four. Trees. Somebody. It's got not not trees, but there's, there's a lot of um, maple tubing. Well, not a lot, but there's several places where maple tubing is going across. Plus, someone has put up signs saying a quiet private road, um, no trespassing. I know they had a lot of problems up there with people like uh, contracting us where they were working up there and stuff. And the same contract that had the maple trees and it's like sold for right so like We'll have to find out. There's also a place right on Mine Road where they've got a sign that I think is supposed to be saying, like, Tom Kessler was building here, but it also says private road authorized access only or something like that. It's, you know, it's just facing right on the road where the past four part of Mine Road. So someone who started to drive down there would probably see it and think, oh, I'm not supposed to drive down this road. But that's not what they're probably should be thinking about. I think I know that you're talking about some fence. That uh, borders. Yeah, it might, yeah, it might be on the fence. It's like right, right. There's like some buildings that are that are right there, and it's kind of right across the road from the building, so it's, it's facing the road. So. And the one we'll that, a little more. Right? What she's referring to is to the tap lines. Um, that is a cemetery. It's a very short spur dead end of my way. There's a cemetery at the end of it. You have to have that accessible for people that way. Anybody else wants to go to the cemetery? Okay. I don't even know how we got on this topic. Jason, what else do you have? <laughs> That's it, I guess, for now. What's, okay. What's the uh, village is helping you with something that's problematic? Oh, I just that, you know, we get the uh, problematic trees. Okay. The ash trees or something. Yeah, there's going to be uh, some ash trees up on Collins um, that they're going to help us take down as time to get their power lines. And in order to put us taking it down, explain the situation for him. He just wants the log, so we're going to put a pile next to this on the side of the garbage farm. Yeah. Can I ask a question about um, you've got here on the block, got Grove Cemetery marked up for. New fence is, is that the entire perimeter or just one line? No, me and Brian went around the. It's a three sides that don't have a fence. No. We didn't do any, make any changes to the uh, timber fence that's on, on the roadside. Okay. And have the, uh, as the adjoining, have all of the adjoining property owners been made aware of that and acknowledged? Not acknowledged. Uh, so I, I still have to hear back from 
you, there was uh, some mention in an earlier email from Brian about um, issues um, for the west and the sewer station. Did you yeah. get that resolved? Uh, we've got that on our agenda. Yeah, yeah. We'll, but for a little bit later tonight. Um, there was one other question that came up too. Uh, what are the trainings? What are the trainings you guys are just like standard safety trainings? Yeah, usually I don't. There's none that attend, so I just left there that bullet there with it. And it was usually I put it in if there's any we're going to. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. Do you have a chase on the training coming up? Yeah, it's not covered at all. Okay. okay. So given given um, Jason's report on the grader, I know we talked about this at the last meeting. Um, do we want to consider putting together an RFP for the grader for this year based on they don't get it until we take delivery of the new grader? Is that, is that something that we should be thinking about? Yep. What are thought, thoughts? Are you guys up? Are you, let's just do this actually. Would you like to start getting the RFP together? Well, this, I think you do. Are you interested in starting that process now? If we really feel confident on November 1 date, yeah, right. start getting it together. Okay, we have consensus. So let's start putting it together and we'll get it on a future. Oh, we're not selling it until. No, we, we're not going to get rid of anything. Yeah, so so nothing's on paper yet. We're just yep. Basically, we're just going to put something out. Um, we're going to start, Brian, not we, Brian will draft up an RFP. For um, selling our existing, but we won't we won't publish it. We just need to bring it back to the board. We'll get your if you're interested in giving some thoughts on it. That would be great. Um, and it we'll talk about whether or not we want to publish it. There's still the town that was interested is still interested. Um, okay. And then we should definitely make, make sure that they get a copy and make sure they got a copy of it. Cool. You, you have still have the bid specs on the, the build specs on the original on the down there. On the down there. I can't say for certain. A lot of stuff got thrown away in one of the previous situations, but I can check to see if it's something in the file cabinet over there. I'll, no, I'll, reach I'll out bet there. there's a copy in, in the files downstairs somewhere too. I, I would imagine we do. There's one over here that's great. So yeah. there, there's a pretty good chance. That we've got it if you whether you have it in it. Okay, excellent. Are we good? Do you have anything else, Jason? Something small I can make the next week if you want, but it's just that I talked to Kevin a minute a little bit and I talked to Brian. Uh, the tractor mower, it, uh, it's not due to replacement yet, but there's a lot of stuff that's wearing me on it, and they're no longer making parts for it. Back up some stuff in house or some of the stuff we're gonna have a couple shops give us a pull on. But say Texas equipment and stocking parts and parts and parts and but book of all not the track of the mower. Yeah, the mower, the mower. Oh. Okay. It did track the mower. Um the thing I think I would recommend is that. Thanks for letting us know. We definitely, definitely need to hear about stuff like that. Um, and I think that in a month or two, we'll start looking at budget. Budget season will start coming up and we'll start asking questions about, do we, is the timeline for everything look right? Do we need to move things around? I think that's actually the perfect place to bring up what we should do about the mower. But if there's something that's more immediate that we need to worry about, yeah. Definitely let us know sooner rather than later. Yep. No, I just want to give you guys a heads up. Yeah, appreciate it. Well, okay. Uh, let's see. Next up is planned purchases. Thanks, Jason. Real quick. Yeah. The stone for grant work. Uh, the stone, it, this is not. Okay. 7,500 in there is for this uh, and the top surface material on the columns. Which is all part of MRDP standards. Which is, yeah, it's just, yeah. it'll go towards the MRDP standards, but it yeah. and our compliance with the standards, but it's motion to approve purchase up to $7,500. We have a motion to have a second. 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 Any discussion? 
this is a motion to approve purchase of stone. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's in the planned purchases yeah. page on packet page five, Donna. Stone and gravel. It's both from the aggregate. Yeah. Oh, so this should not say stone and stone. It should say stone and gravel. There we go. Okay. And that's so your motion is just to be clear, actually, on your motion, your motion is stone and gravel. My motion is to purchase stone and gravel up to $7,500. Okay. Your understanding, too. understanding. Perfect. Okay, good. Uh, any other discussion? And that's covered within the proposed This is an additional amount. This is yes, this is. Plan purchase within our budget. No, no emergency or unusual process. Okay, all those in favor of signify by saying aye. 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 Yeah, I just have it. Uh, Green Mountain ATV road improvements. Okay, so uh, this is packet page six, and we also have a Couple of minutes. Page. It's like six all the way up to twelve. Yeah. Uh, we also have the, the supplement from the um, Conservation Commission. Their report on a, a separate thing. Um, so the we brought this up last time, uh, and the board asked. Uh, Jason and the Conservation Commission to go up and take a closer look. Uh, they all did. Um, the other part the board had requested was to make a change to the board didn't like the uh, to the Massa Trails Program resolution of commitment from the municipality the way it was phrased. So I had prepared a Draft alternative. The draft alternative appears on packet page 14. Um, it's mostly like the original, uh, but it, is, it includes language that's intended to be uh, automatically renewing each year uh, after town meeting day, unless the board warrants uh, the. Warren's pass so that they're not renewing the agreement. They understood why we had to do that. I, I'm showing this to the board first. Uh, Bassa had expressed a general support of the idea, but the specific language is coming to you first. So, uh, do we want to do the agreement first or the Project details first. I got some information on the agreement at the moment. Yeah, please. So when we were up there, we spoke to Ethan about the agreement and they're willing to do a yearly agreement. And especially for the section of Potting Hall that they are out of the railroad, they would do a yearly agreement. They have no problem with that. He said some of the stuff is just in there, their wording that he can change on you know, how the next deal that's going to work. And this has an ending date, which I like. Yeah, that was the other thing that doesn't hold future select boards accountable unless they, they it holds them accountable to give a notice of Decline. Yeah, yeah, that it, it does two things. It renews yearly unless action is taken. And in 2027, after 2027, it just ends. But Jason, you you indicate that uh, VASA would be willing to, in essence, bring up the agreement on the system. 
I explained them the situation, you know, you know how the board changes. And they said they'd be fine with the ordinance in a way that would accommodate both parties. Well, if they're amenable to that, I would prefer that our draft agreement state that the agreement shall be renewed on an annual basis rather than a default provision where we don't take action. Number one, this language doesn't have any, any um, drop dead date associated with it. So when when would, when would we be responsible for declining to approve the agreement? All you're saying would have to be 60 days notice. Something, something like that upon, you know, upon 30 days or 60 days notice or something like that. But if they're, if they're simply willing to renew the agreement, why don't we just renew the agreement? I agree with auto renewing an agreement. I think that's good practice with the 30 day notice if either party wants to um, so renegotiate auto renew from 30 days from the date of auto, date of notice date, date of notice date of notice so like if we auto renew annually then their 30 day notice would be basically say we say we sign this in august right mm -hmm. um but next year in may we want to look at it so we have a year we have a annual contract, but a provision of that contract is with 30 or 60 days, whatever the days are, doesn't really matter to me. But with a 30 to 60 day notice, both parties agree to come back to the table to renegotiate the terms of the contract, regardless of when the notice is given. Okay, so it isn't going to be on the annual notice. You don't always have to catch it on in August, right? When, when... It seems to me if it's going to be an auto renew, there's got to be a hard and fast date from which the notice is given. But if it's a 30 day or a 60 day opt out clause, it auto renews until we decide. But a month to month lease almost. You know? I've been saying if we signed it in August 15th, uh, it would automatically renew on August 15th, so we would have to get notice of declining it the 30 thing, days before that. But they said that they're willing to do whatever the town wants, so we could just say 60 days. The thing with it is any kind of contract. The thing with that is that the annual part of it is only about the auto renew, where the term of notice is about whenever you give the term. So it's not like when it auto renews, it's auto renewing so that you're contracted for a year. It's that it's just auto renewing until you give notice and that notice requires 30 to 60 days. I like that. That's what I mean. Like that's in the business world, that's what we do with contracts all the time. Like it's about, we want the contract, to, we don't want this to stop being in effect on August 15th of 2023. We want it to be in effect on August 24th also, right? Um, so it's only about that renewal, it's automatic. Uh, I'm trying to process what you're saying. So my only concern is whether or not we constitute a new board every March. Mm -hmm. um, so if a new bar, so if a new board came in in March and they hated everything about this agreement, like this agreement, crap, throw it out, they would they, they would notice. be able to give notice to the club to say, we want to talk about this, we want to renegotiate. Um, and here's your notice of renegotiation. So after 60 days, this will no longer be in effect because we gave you notice. Um, and in between now and then, we have time to reconcile whatever it is we need to work through. All right. So, given given your concept, what needs to change in this draft language? I think it just needs to say that it auto renews annually, um, and that with um, if either party would like to 
um, make adjustments or nullify the agreement, they must give 60 day written notice. I think I've got threats. I think I understand what you're saying. It's working in. Could you make those amendments, bring it back to the board at the next meeting, and then go on to the project, or do you want to discuss this more? I'm happy with that. You're happy with that? What do you think, Mark? Quick temperature check. Um, I'm fine with that, although I think some of the uh, conservation committee's um, recommendations, I don't know if we want to put them in this or not. Yep. I, I think that they should certainly be any work should be signed off by the state of stormwater governance program to where it's necessary. I mean, if you read through this, there's quite a bit of erosion going on there. It seems to me that I don't know if you want to put that here. I I wouldn't think so. This is really their request to us mm -hmm. uh, about kind of making sure that they can maintain access to improvements. We have a separate right. uh, proposal for approving the work itself. Okay. Uh, and I think that we would be best to cover any requests we have about the work as part of our work in the right of way and on town property. So that's what I would think is good. Oh, it's good to I'm, I'm bring it up and find me. So aren't you so do we want to do 30 or 60 days? I don't care. I think 60 days is more reasonable if the board only meets twice a month. Sounds good. But I didn't hear what you said. I just said I think 60 days is more reasonable if the board only meets twice yeah, a month. It's hard to do it in 30 days. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hi. Uh, just a quick question. Um, so I, I saw the map, I'm having trouble placing it. Is this above norms, like uh your formal property? Yep. Yep. Uh, and has anybody on the board been up there to just kind of look and see what the erosion is and what needs to be mitigated? We're about to jump into the details, so if you hold that thought, you're ahead of us, Margo. But um, we have seen pictures, so we have some okay. conservation commission members here too that might want to speak to it. Yep. So before we get to more of that detail, anything else on agreement? Nope. Okay. Good on agreement. Good. Okay. So I'll bring that with the change request changes back to the board to sign off on it and then we'll submit it to the Green Mountain ATV saying this is our our proposed changes to their request. Yep, just one question. Spencer, you're here. Um, do you have any concerns about what we're talking about in terms of the agreement? No, terms? Not at all. Okay. Perfect. Thank yeah, you. Sure. All right. Uh, so getting into the, this particular project itself. Uh, this is work on Pine Hall up near the Gomo lot. Uh, and it does, uh, contrary to what I had stated last time we talked about, it does actually uh, come out of the uh, roadway for a section. Um, and we've got a few people that are more familiar with the, the specific work itself. Um, Jason, uh, who all went up with you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and who came from the green, the ADB uh, So a, a good number of individuals went up to take a look and kind of get more familiar with the project on the ground. Uh, I guess uh, probably the best place to start would be uh, Conservation Commission has prepared a report and uh, do they have any thing they'd like to discuss yeah. the chair with us? Make sure that everybody. Oh, um, I'm sorry, I've got one more thing. The boom microphone to capture the audience is still not working very well. Uh, if you could take a seat up at the front to. Right yeah. <laughs> Uh, that will help all the folks at home 
I have copies of hard copies of the report. Yep. But it was emailed. Yeah. You don't have hard Wait. copies of the pictures. Oh, no, it's okay. It's, don't listen to him. I just said it's 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 sorry. <laughs> it the, was a little late. Well, yeah. the Google, the Google Doc, um, whatever you call it, to get there is at the bottom of the cross paper. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, Doug Kim, will you point that down a little bit? Yeah. Thanks. Lois is soft spoken. We want to hear everything she says. For one thing, we want to be very clear that the um, project is on the Gomo Town Forest, the Cutting Hollow, as it goes right through down to Waterville. Um, it was quite a rough ride up there. I went with Jason in a side by side, the first ever ATV ride. <laughs> um, so we know that the, the road is rough and it needs improvement. But um, what we did find was the first question had been asked, is it on Cotting Hollow Road in the right of way, um, part of the work? And in fact, part of the work is not. We found that that work was done very well, as we have over the years had always had good work done by the, the crew that comes in when they do the ATV work. The thing that was very disheartening was we had no knowledge of it. The three of us saw it for the first time, and it was done a year ago. Um, in the past, over the years, people in the ATB uh, group have contacted us and talked about what was going on. So that was very disappointing. Um, but clearly, the Class 4 Cotting Hollow Road needs a lot of work. A piece of what you folks will be having to decide is what you're going to do about that. We, we recommend, we met as a whole conservation commission um, after our visit, no one um, we really, We really think it's important to keep it on the road and in the right of way and not deviate into the, into the forest land. And that was primarily, as I understand it, the question that you to answer. It, as a practical matter, that section is totally washed out and would require tens of thousands of dollars to put back into any kind of condition at all that would resemble a round because of the nature of the ravine that it does so, it would be highly susceptible to wash out again. So does it make does it make any sense at all to think about trying to put the trail back into that ravine? I think it's worth talking about, and I can say that because I know that um, Noel and Jason and Dean, who have that kind of experience, talked about some of the options. And I think the options need to be considered no matter what the decision is because it sounded like good options. And they're back there now. And I can move back. So how much um how much of the trail was moved off the actual class four road? Is it large portions of it? Or like I can't really tell from the photos, so I'm not really sure. The whole steamer portion, I can tell you. Yeah, go ahead. About seven hundred feet, seven eight hundred feet. Okay, that's my GPS track on the site. And that does that pretty much circum circumscribe the the steep ravine where the road used to go. Well, the whole thing's pretty steep. Uh, it's just the last seven hundred feet toward Waterville. It's right on the inside corner. It's that section right there. It's the worst one. It's bedrock. It's all this left. Oh, okay. That's a picture of the bedrock. Yep, that's that's right away the original road, not old trail. And that's just after the low river uh, low water crossing. If you're headed toward Domo, I mean toward Don Yeah. If you go through the, the river crossing you go to the pipe and you go up to the first like landing right there. Okay. Where the road used to go up the bedrock, it now goes up the Correct me if I'm wrong, well, it's the old driveway to the property, correct? Yes. Yeah. So they're using the old driveway that was there 
for about 700 feet and then it lifted back on about a mile. So when we were up there, I mean, it's a class four road. So technically the four wheelers or vehicles we use the old section right now. Health wise, it would be unhealthy for the environment for them to do that because they're going to be stirring up sediment and stuff because the brook has kind of took over part of the product on the road. So they'd be stirring up stuff. The new section that they put in, they did it very well. And the crossing is a pretty clean crossing because the driving down to it, all the stuff, the rock they use gets rid of all the mud that was around, so it's crossing pretty clean. Uh, they could move it back and they should. My thought, personal thought, is that they they saw elk permission and it got signed off. So they did the work and it was signed off. No fault of theirs. So it's not like they did this, you know, and it was like, oh, we're not, you know, it was signed off on. Uh, as a highway. As a, yes. In the previous yeah, one. Were, yeah. So that was one of the big problems. The work they did was good. What I'd like to see <clears throat> is then to move back onto the road. Hopefully sooner, before there's any erosion happening over there, and they start noticing it, we can get it moved back over. But right now, I feel health-wise, far as for the stream and stuff, it's healthier for them to run over there than they are running the road. It's my personal feeling for my mind side. But we don't have rights to that. The town. We we the oh, we own the property. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I that's, okay. Sorry, the driveway threw me off. Right away, where you could sign once a year to get them permission. And any, I would like to see in the future that the um, conservation commission and anything at four wheel rides come all the way in on. So everybody's on the same page as far as what's happening. Because the way it got handled last time put everybody into a position of, you know, they did do it right, what they asked for, but it's not right for what we want and kind of thing. It's the best for everybody. Are the, um, is the old driveway right of way, was there ever a right of way for the landowner or was it something that's the reason they're not using that any longer? Oh, no. Is there an existing no, right of way? It's no. the old Gomo homestead. No. Oh, oh, oh that we own that. Okay, I gotcha. Sorry, you guys are referencing, I don't know the property clearly. <laughs> You're referencing the La Rose area. Well, so I certainly would recommend it. You might all want to talk to Jason about a ride. You can take three others. You'll have to start charging admission. <laughs> Do you have insurance? <laughs> um, and you can you can access it by going in the Waterville side, and, <clears throat> you know, up that way. Parking at the Long Trail parking lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, just for clarity, the contract. That's going to be coming back yearly. The recommendation from the Conservation Commission is the landowner right away, which is on the town land, not on the town right away. And everybody's supportive of that idea on both sides. All three, four, five sides. That's kind of a really good skill. You're supporting what? Uh, that idea of an every year contract. I, I would be supportive of that personally. So, so we've got a is that needed or are we really looking at a hold on well the same thing they put in the permit for they want to put water bar or they want to fix a couple water bars that got messed up or they went up a little bit uh the ones that are there they're taking the flow of the additional water that one of them had failed on or not failed but it's running through kind of So that is, that, that is, is within the highway. The section that's not <clears throat> in the right of way is totally fine. They don't need to work out there. Should be fixed. Well, it's not. Well, I mean, it should be moved over. What I like to see, and it's only my personal, is when that starts having a problem, is they do what they need to do to get it back on you know, put the money into the road and then the right of way to put it there and not keep the Anything over here. The conservation commission. Well, well, 
Ethan had mentioned that he was going to get some uh, cost figures and that kind of thing for what they would be working with that would help inform the board because if it's class four road, we have responsibility. I have it. Okay. Uh, Noel, you are nodding your head. You're in agreement generally with what Jason is recommending. Yeah, the only thing I was going to add is that uh, the commission's concern really was the expansion of trails further. When this one goes bad, they just keep going into the woods. So that's why we recommend once this goes bad, fix the road, then solve the whole problem at the same time. And, and, and fix when it goes bad, are they going to fix, put it back to original state? When the trail goes back? Yeah. This is this on the town land. I don't know. My idea of going bad, I don't know if theirs is the same. I feel once it starts showing any signs of erosion and causing any silt or anything to get into the river, you know, miles of time to town. Whatever happens financially, fix up that side of the road. That's when we fix it up and then put some topsoil or hydrocy, something on that side to stabilize it. Yeah. But should it be our, our cost to do that? Well, that's a good question because well, I guess yeah, some yeah, well, it's it's all. Well, let's not. What was the last question? Should it be our cost to fix up? The damage on our land of my feet. Well, to be clear, that's a perfectly, that's a different conversation, but 100% of our erosion is not caused by ATVs. And the ATV club currently is not asking for any town money to fix that up. We're coming up with a plan for the future. Why do you see what I'm asking? How you're is. asking. Should a future board, which we can't hold them to, be spending money on a right away that has degraded over time because of neglect? Yeah. I guess I don't know how much money does it now have to put into your driveway to upgrade it? I don't know. It, upgrading roads and spending money on class four roads is just a different conversation. I see where you're tying it in, but. I mean, this is clear cut. Um, I wonder if I could ask a question. Uh, I haven't been up there for a few number of years, but from my recollection, the area that the prior board had authorized them to go out of the right of way and on the Gomo lot to go around that section, the section that was washed out and looked like a basically a river bottom and had boulders, like huge, huge boulders. Yeah. And that erosion had all happened well before 18 years. It had been happening over the last 40, 50 years. So is my recollection still correct that that looks like a river bottom? And yeah, and the river's river. actually running it, so it kind of took it back over. OK. <laughs> yeah, you can still drive it right now with 18 years. Down through that. It would be smooth, like the ground really built, you can do it. I assume this is what you're talking about. Um, I remembered it worse, but maybe it probably was. Yeah. It probably was worse. I think the fines have built in because they folded over the last yeah. 20, 30 years. If anyone would like to see a picture of what we're talking about, you're welcome to come check it out. Um, Margo, yep. Yeah, that's, uh, just, this is a question. Sure. Hold on one second, Jason. One second. Uh, no, probably not. 
Actually, we might be though because conservation very possibly could. The board wouldn't be having this conversation though, no. <laughs> but in order in order for us to access uh, the, the property for doing some of the management practices that we're, we've got on four of the fields up here. Yeah. Um, not having that section working tough. Rideable, yeah. Yeah, going from Waterville. <clears throat> well, even going from Waterville is tough, except for now that so it's <clears throat> beneficial to you too. So Go ahead, Denise. At, at the present moment, we don't have a, any kind of an actual agreement for a trail on the property. It sounds like a former board did have an agreement for a trail. For an agreement, we just authorized. We authorized it to go around that bad section of the wash trail. Uh, Denise, did you want to add something? Yeah, so yeah. Now it does affect this something, but it's really hard to hear. So I just yeah. wanted to make sure that we're sharing the page and that there is a discussion about the existing work that has already been done and whether or not that could or should be maintained and somehow. And separate from that, and yet connect with the proposed project. Margo. have a thought that maybe the board would be open to. It seems like the plan that was outlined um, was appropriate when it was initially brought up on packet page 10. Um, I'm just wondering if a revised plan, if we actually, the board could, and Brian even could delegate updating this plan to the conservation committee. So we would need a, a motion, I think, for this, but um, delegate this defining what the plan is um, to the conservation committee and um, VASA. So whether that's Spencer or Ethan, or whoever they feel is most appropriate and bring a revised plan back to the board that actually specifies the things we're talking about, such as um, what it means to for the trail to go bad. Does it mean signs of erosion? And then what would the next step be if that were the case and build that into what the project plan is because to Denise's point, I think the project plan actually is very much about um, today and tomorrow, right? Not just about today. Um, what are the board's thoughts on that? I would suggest that the road form be included as well. Sure. So because he can approve it right away. Or the, uh, I'm peaceful. I like the idea of having the conservation commission right now. Because I, I am interested in erosion, but this is what I'd like to have the state sign off on. Okay. Because I remember when I lived up there, I could drive my pickup truck over in the seven. So they go over. Two wheel drive or four wheel drive? I only have two wheel drive. <clears throat> uh, do you, are you amenable to that? 
I mean, it seems to me like everybody's kind of in agreement on yeah, it doesn't really seem like being aligned. For, for clarification, is this the plan that's been initiated by VASA? Proposed. 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 Yep. Okay. Yep. So what okay, so can you be pretty specific about yes. what you're proposing? I am saying I think we should have a motion because I think we should be clear in a motion, but I would propose that we ask conservation, whoever they delegate, maybe all of them want to do it, maybe some of them do whoever they delegate as best suited to represent conservation, but conservation committee. Um, Jason, very specifically Jason, Jason seemed to know a lot about this and whoever VASA would like to have represent the VASA side of this. So perhaps it's Spencer and Ethan, but they can decide who that those folks are, um, but have them work together to define the why the project is needed and what the plan would be for this particular project. Um, so that the updates that VASA intends to do, um, you know, they'll have the support of the folks impacted to do so. Yes. I like that. And, and that way we get some history, almost some policy. Because the same thing is going to happen on Hawaii Road. It's happening on the Hawaii Road. It's going to happen on the Miami Road. Could I so move? Yeah, sure. You can sign it. Okay, we have a so we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we have a second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Just a point of clarification. Is it? Is it? Assume that that plan will identify the section of trail which is not within the town highway right away and on the government property. Um. Well, we have. Would you like me to respond, or would you like to as the motion, or I made, can. You made the motion. The conservation commission is part of. Know what. Along with our control plan, along with the fact that Green Mountain EPD Club, so that you would like it to outline where it goes off the state land. A portion that's secure. I think everybody knows what's going on there. I think they need to be specific about the coordinates, yes. <laughs> to Noel's point about coordinates, I think that matters. Yeah. No? Uh, the only thing that's running through my head here is it would be great to formally define exactly where that roadbed is on the maps so we have a place to start from. Just to be sure, it hasn't been surveyed that I know of. I mean, we know where it is, more or less, but. Do you do you have map? You have Most roads are not surveyed. They, they were surveyed in 1790. <laughs> Um, with a rod and chain, um, the, the, the current statute on that <laughs> is essentially the road is where it is. Okay. You know, it's it's except identifiable. For, <laughs> right, except for is yeah, exactly. Yes. We Jason. <clears throat> one question. Technically you could project, you have to survey. The project where they're wanting to do the work is in the road right. Away. Just to be clear. Is within the road right yeah, of way. The, okay. The, where they want to do the work is not on the Gomo property. They already did the work there. So the, where they're wanting to do the project is not on the Gomo property. It's in the right of way. And it's farther up the hill. Way to complicate it. No, that's, I mean, I, that's actually that simplifying. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, spent one second. Spencer? Yeah, yes, yes. I was just curious. Uh, well, right now. So the VASA trail program project resolution form that VASA has in their date as form. I know we we're talking about so the recreational investment represented by VASA trail program resources must be protected for the useful life of investment. So that's I think is saying you know obviously we need to maintain and that's something that we can then to revisit. To the uh, well, committee is it? Conservation. Conservation. Yeah. You know, something we, we don't mind revisiting. 
to hear it. You know, just we want to keep it maintained, obviously, and you know, protecting the water source and all that stuff. So I just want to point out that what that seems like it is in there. I mean, obviously, you want to keep up their investment that we make and keep both parties happy. So yeah. Yeah, you guys will be best friends before this is over. <laughs> <laughs> Dean? Uh, I just wanted to uh, just circle back around that with the part of the trail that moves into the town forest property, it still has the board. Uh, I don't know whether you want it connected to your motion or completely separate of you deciding to grant uh, land owner permission for them to use that trail. Because without that, it should be separate. We already have the current motion is long enough. We can do it separate. <laughs> Duncan. Okay. What? Your pen is squeaking. What? Your pen is squeaking. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> going to have to get used to it. <laughs> I mean, everybody was thinking it. <laughs> no, it's not you. Uh, we have a motion in a second. Would you like to respond to Dean? Did you? I said we'll do it in a second one. Understood. Okay. Yep. Thank good. you for the point. Okay. Um, reminder of the motion. The motion is to let them all work together. <laughs> yes. Motion is to let them all work together. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye it's happening. It's the one you cracked. I know. I just had to think for a minute. Remind me of what I Buy me time. Okay. Motion to. Grant a one year uh, land owner permit to the Green Mountain ATV Club contingent that they, that the Conservation Commission and Gold Foreman sign off on the work. That's going a lot. Sufficient? Uh, That's all parties. One year. That's where they're out of the right of way, but on the town property. And then we'll plan. Yeah, don't we need to see it back first or no? You're just saying no. I, I think the request is asking Green Mountain ATV to provide us with a landowner permission form for the section of trail that goes into the go a lot. And before uh, it board. comes to the board, I'd like to chase them and the Conservation Commission to sign off on it. I gotcha. That's okay. Yeah. yeah, it's down on land. It doesn't go under the ordinance. That's more of a use. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have a motion. Do we have a second? You look confused. If I was absolutely sure what the motion was, I'd be happy to The motion that. was, okay. Are you ready, Donna? She's motion. already got it. Is to request Green Mountain ATV to provide a trails of green a landowner landowner permission card for the footage that they have on the Domo lot currently. And before it comes back to the board, the board signature is to go through Jason and the conservation draft. I'll second this motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Me. Okay, all right, let's have it. So it's not with you. Okay, good. Thank you, conservation. Yes, commission. thank you. Yeah, Thanks, thank everybody. You that was helpful. Thank you. Um, can, all I, parties. can I add one thing? It's it's related to this question. I was up there the other day, and maybe Spencer can help on this. There's a sign at just past Norman Rose, which is a little deceiving. It, it says, um, that's the trail members only. And it, it kind of makes it sound like nobody, like it's a Vassa Trail only and nobody else can use it. I don't know if you guys have got any other signs that are less. Um, May I break this thing for that? It's, it's starting to keep the, the G for a truck out there because technically they. Which you can't. They can't, no. Plus well, we can't. I mean, it's a class four highway. Well, exactly. Any, anybody can use that. Uh, and you know the reality is it's a class four highway and we cannot restrict anybody from right walking on it or biking no, on it or taking the jeep on it or 
So that the language on that sign kind of makes it sound like it's Bass's Trail and nobody else can go on there. And I was proud of the Hawaii Road too. Yeah. 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 Right. So that same yeah. sign yeah. is it half a Hawaii Road. Yeah. So in so, other words, any vehicle actually can drive on it. Yeah. So I think those signs are problematic. No, we don't want real work. Yeah. 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 I see a lot of people on dirt bikes going. I mean, where we could put that sign, although we, we sort of really can't, is when it goes on to the Golden Law. When it goes on our property, we could have a sign that said ATVs only. Because it is fast at ATVs. Or fast right. Yeah. yeah. But we can't own the bike. I have a question. I understand the sign. Yeah. As environmental wise, I know a Jeep can drive on it. They're doing all the fixing up work. We're going to hold them liable if it gets torn up by a Jeep. There's nothing we can do about it. It's a public road. I think it's, a it's risk. part of the risk, right? It's part of the risk that NASA takes by, by using, using the class four highways as part of the trail system. If, if, if NASA negotiated agreements, with private landowners to put a trail on private land, they could say only VASA ATVs. The only reason I bring it up is when, when a rut gets caused because of something that takes out a water bar and it erodes at one foot, then it's our responsibility as a town to fix it. Yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a, it's a catch 20 foot. But would you fix it up, up in that area? Because, like, a mine that's where. There's a certain uh, there's a certain degree of erosion where we do have to be involved, and we would have to <clears throat> do the work. Uh, the class four roads still don't rank terribly high on our priority list. But we are committed, uh, as required by the MRDP, the Municipal Road Care Permit, to address erosion that causes the only erosion greater than one foot in every public road location, regardless of classification. Yeah. Okay, we are far beyond our you, timeline, but yeah, there you go. Helpful information, Margaret. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're all beyond a timeline. Do we have anything else to cover on this item or shall we move on? Excellent. Tractor parade. All right. Uh, we have a request for a tractor parade uh, proceeding from Manchester property to Legion Field. Proposed date is September 17th, 2022. September 17th? Yep. Yeah. I can get a time on here, but uh, early afternoon, I believe. Which highways are they looking for? Uh, so that would cover a little bit of River Road East, uh, Railroad Streets, uh, Route 15. So that's the law well, to make an application to the state for Route 15. Through school, to school Street. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I make a motion approving the tractor parade on the route you just described. So. Motion. Move second. I'll second. Second uh, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. That took less than five minutes. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. We're gonna we gotta keep making up now some time. Not, not we. Yes. Thank yes. you. So there's a grant opportunity for uh, removing invasive species in favor of uh, native species, which would go towards grant. Uh, excuse me. Not we removal in the arboretum. The tree board is applying for it. Uh, no cost to the town. No town match? Nope. Cost. Also, motion to approve. We have motion to uh, a second. Tree board application of not weed removal grant at Legion or Chuckleberry Field. Just, just, Is just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't the, 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 Discussion? Yes, please. The only thing they might ask us for would be track removal. And there is a lot of it down there already. Old fencing that's been buried in the front brush. Every time they put up new ball field fence, they just push down the wall and remove 
Is it hidden by the mouth? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Okay. So is that something that you would be looking? Sorry, for the removal, you're talking about the cost to dispose, or are you talking about trucking? Like, what are you? What is? What are you thinking? Uh, yeah. Okay. This is going to be a three year project. And the step one is going to be to get started um, in my services. They're going to take care of the not be, and then they're going to do that and shoot them again next year, like they've done about 37 years. They've got a third year in here. And then U.S. Fish and Wildlife is going to come in and restore the river bank all the way up to Chipperberry. <laughs> Where do I sign? Yeah, Yeah, great. Yeah. So um, they need for me to tell them tomorrow. Red Star wants to put a date and start. Okay. They need me to send them an email and they'll say the same thing. Okay. Cool. So we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. I'll, uh, I just have it. We'll sign it tonight if we have a copy of it. Do you have a copy of it? It's uh, an email. It's an email. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we'll get it. We'll get it signed right away. Do they need a? Okay. Perfect. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> I keep that in mind. Right. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Sue. That's great news. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, voting delegate for town fair. So uh, we weren't sure about this last time, but uh bring it up again. Uh, if anybody had a chance to look at uh the town fair materials that BLCT has sent out. He they changed the date, so we need to and he was just checking. <laughs> so that that like it is in killing. Yeah. I think that wasn't the VLCT that was uh, the other get there. I'm going to the bathroom. You guys okay, sign up, Mark. Yeah. Okay, Mark, but it's October 7th and 8th, 6th and 7th. Are you in? No. You're not in? Oh, Lord. Okay. You can even stay overnight. At town expense. Oh no. <laughs> So if Mark is not going to be our voting delegate, would somebody else like to? Something else they went down that way. The sixth and seventh <laughs> is a Thursday for and Friday. I would if it wasn't this year. Okay. So I'm not hearing any cheering for um, attending. Would you like to go? I'd be willing to go. We uh, should have a rep. To yeah, I, I think to not send somebody. <laughs> so we have a motion for Brian to be the delegate. Would is there a second? A second. Yeah, and a second. Did you ever go when you were a board member? There's always time, Margo. <laughs> get, get your petition Sign in by January 21st, maybe. Um, you can run against Evan. <laughs> uh, okay, we have a motion in a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just have it. Congratulations, Mark. Yep, you're in, Mark. <laughs> Signing management contract for flood resilient communities fund grant. So next up, uh, I don't know the page. This is on back at page 15. Um, LCPC 
we kind of progressed to the point with the home of meadow uh, bio floodplain uh, project where we had a, a more formal relationship with uh, LCPC to grant them permission uh, for managing the project. So that's it's just formalizing that. Yeah, they've been doing this for us while we were applying for it, kind of working things out. We're in a good spot where we received the grant. Um, Seth and I were talking about uh, how to manage the RFP process and our procurement policies between LCPC and ours. Uh, and so we kind of felt a signed agreement would be better. Their obligations say that they will work with the town of Wolf. Yeah. That yeah. just saves us some money. <laughs> <laughs> they might want, they might want to change the billing. Yeah, I think that uh, Can you tell Seth that that's not a very strong starting point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the, the dollar amount in here is not a dollar amount that we're paying them for. That is a dollar amount that they are eligible for as as part of the management expenses allowed by the. It says under obligations of the town, so 4A, in consideration of services provided by the LCPC, the town shall pay LP, LCPC after review and approval of invoices submitted in accordance with provisions of section 3C. So is that money in, money out because we're getting the grant? Yes. Yes or should be? Right. I mean, it doesn't say where they're going to, uh, I guess we're getting the money. Grant money. Yeah, we are the recipient of the funds. So, um, maybe, is there something? Money in, money out, right, I hear you. Is there something in here about um, contingent on, on receipt of the grant? Uh, we have received the grant. We have the grant money. Oh, okay. Never mind. Do you want to make it somewhere? Make a motion to accept LCPC's proposal. With the change of referencing the town of Johnson instead of the town of Wolf. Yeah. And That's authorizing the chair to sign or Brian? Doesn't matter. Uh, it would probably be better for the chair because I'm out of town for a few days. So. That's what your motion is, Mark. That's exactly what my motion is. Can we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. And we have a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nice have it. Updates for a draft grant agreement for the Vermont Electric Co op and Town of Johnson stormwater improvements. So, uh, bringing you an update on this, it's not quite ready for you to sign off on, unfortunately, but the uh, Vermont Electric Co op is uh, in conceptual agreement about. Uh, granting us an easement in order to support our future connection to the stormwater improvements that are being made on their, on their property as part of this grant. Um, well, I don't have the document to grant us that easement with us yet, but they, they agree in concept and they're drawing up to the, the documents for the easement. Okay. So no action we need. There, there is a note. I was hoping it's an update. But yeah. it's just a brief verbal update that they are in agreement. So I'm getting that secured and going to proceed to continue to work with them on, on this project. Okay. okay. Yeah. Public display policy update. Okay. So we have updates on. Uh, possible policy uh, to use with uh, for public displays, uh, flags, and other types. I included two versions in the. I include two versions in the packet, starting on page packet page nineteen. Um, see the first one is if we wanted to allow some displays uh, this would 
set criteria that uh, any display would have to meet, such as uh, the group requesting the flag or display is a recognized municipal volunteer group. So the flag or display represents an organization dedicated to the public good of the citizen of Johnson. The flag display represents a national, state, or city interest. Uh, whether there's a historic use of the flag or display, uh, whether it contributes to unity and community, uh, if it's free of association with recognized state groups, and if the flag or display represents a positive interest or value worthy of public recognition. Those are criteria that the board would have to evaluate the proposal and determine whether they supported it or not. Um, there is also the second option is much more restrictive and basically says that no displays will be placed on town owned buildings, properties, or within the town owned right of way, um, with the exception of uh, purchase sponsorships for recreational activities. Um, and I do have an amendment to this one that we should change rec recreational activities. Uh, I'm not sure what the exact phrasing, but uh, the size where we've used this in the past has been for the baseball program. Uh, but I did not think about Tucson Ad Live, which also sells uh, advertising space that they put up as part of a public display as part of the, the fan stand at Tucson Ad Live. So we would want to carve out exceptions for those two programs uh, at the very least. Do we, do we um, have authority over the banners that go across the street for graduation, welcome back students, and all this stuff? They go through our right of way, so, so that yeah. would have to apply here. I hope so. Uh, we do have an existing agreement with the village that uh, I wasn't able to get a copy of. Just a little more looking for it, but we did make it. We did sign an agreement some number of years ago with the village uh, about banners over. Uh, yeah. That wouldn't be in the binder. It's not. Which says what? Uh, basically, granting the village permission to fly the banners over Pearl's. I don't know if that exists. Without rules, we'll never know. Because of, they never could have held us to it in any case. They don't automatically have a contract or something. It was, I, or if I'm recalling it correctly, it's an MOU that we signed pre COVID. Very at least uh, an MOU that we signed with the village when I don't remember what they wanted to display. If they wanted to display something innocuous, Wall Merritt was at the office and we got into this conversation about that is in our right of way. And Ford didn't really want to get involved in the nitty gritty of dealing with it. So we signed a basic MOU of. You know, between these posts where you're putting up the banners, where you've historically put up banners, you can continue to put up banners. So, essentially, the authority to decide what went up for a banner was delegated to the trustees? What did that go? Basically, as, as I recall it, yes. Banners like from the college, the University of College and the village, that they would be put up for like the blood drive and for, uh, commencement for welcoming students. And then it was maybe three years ago, maybe two, uh, with the racial equity alliance at the Noel. Remember that there was a that banner? And that was, I think, that that request went through the village. And they, uh, they, they came to the select board as well. That Banner, but annual college banners 
I don't ever remember coming over here for those. They did. We at some point of the past, we there gave is the village permission to. There is an unsigned document on the website that is called Town of Johnson Highway Access and Work of the Right of, in the, of the Right of Way in the Right of Way. Sorry, I can't speak. Um, and it has an application in it. I assume that has something to do with this. Temporary object we don't need to get involved in. But college needed to move their banners onto Pearl Street because at one point the state of Vermont said no. The state of Vermont. And now the state of Vermont has changed their stance on that. Yeah. So they could go across to a 15 again and permits they won't. And honestly, that would be more visible place for them. But I don't know if any actual right trustees have to buy anything in the town right away. If so, there is something, I would be happy to read it. But. We also have this Town of Johnson guidelines on <clears throat> placement of signs in the highway right of way that talks about um, a sign defined as any structure, display, device, or representation, either temporary or permanent, portable or ground mounted, which is designed to use or uh, designed or used to advertise or call attention to anything, person, business, activity, or place, and is visible from a highway or other right of way. It does not include the flag, the is the word in there, so not a flag, the flag pennant or insignia of any nation, state, or town. Whenever dimensions of the sign are specified, they shall include the panels and frames. That's state statute. There's more referencing state statute also. It says it should be the policy of the town of Johnson to allow up to two directional signals with surface area not to exceed one square foot per sign erected by the town on any existing highway signpost highway on the highways or over which the town has jurisdiction, except class one town highways. The colors and directional signals shall be in contrast, black or brown to the colors used on the highway signs, green. Directional signs on the same highway signpost shall be in different for different purposes. Um, it goes on to talk about a permit for the right of way access, indicating the exact location proposed wording and any other pertinent information must meet a minimum criteria and shall not compromise highway safety. Road foreman shall review and approve. Um, it talks about the capacity of holding the sign. I, I think the, the discussion about the banners that are mostly used for the college is kind of beside the point and not the question that was put before the board about, you know, this is a, a statement of values kind of flag uh, question. We, we can fine tune some of the details about making sure that we have an improved process for uh, things like the college and the, the exact line and everything else that that occasionally does fly other banners for other business. How do you carve out something for like the college and not any other educational institution in town, business, or what have you? Like Blair Way, you know, Blair Way Elementary, uh, the the Center. Center. I think it's going to be a little bit tough. Uh, and I don't have the language off the top of my head for for how we would do that. But I, I think that's why the state could out the business because you start splitting hairs and that's where you get in trouble. But the state is back to allow it. Well, I mean, Evan did put that. I guess in there are certain things that are being hard to find. But are they allowing it for? Only, only B trans or only state government can put something up. 
for geographical applying for permission. It's not something I've ever done. So I'm not terribly familiar with the process, but you do have to apply to be transfer permission to apply a banner over uh, over a state road. Uh, but they it used to be you couldn't do anything over the state road, and now there is a process to allow. I'm not familiar enough with it because we've never asked what's allowed and what's not. They, they also have them installed, but I believe that maybe the same with hardware. It's a class one highway, but town. Yeah. They do. Yeah, we have more schools. More schools, too. Yeah, yeah. more schools, a town on the highway. The class one. So well, then maybe, Evan, maybe that's the state doesn't have a policy. Maybe it's. But the state definitely does. It's just we never use it. So we're not. Did you ask our lawyer about um, if we were to uh, allow our committees to recommend? Did you talk to the lawyer about this at all? I didn't talk to the lawyer about this. I did speak to Derek Baxter at the LCT. His advice is take it to your attorney. Run it by your town attorney. <laughs> yeah. um, so that wasn't very productive, but that's not productive for all. Advice. But thanks for that. I, I also, for what it's worth, spoke with Carl Ian Deere from the VLCT in the Municipal Law Department. One of my concerns was, is it a proper function of municipal government to fly flags other than the United States flag and the state of Vermont flag? And in most cases, uh, we're Dillon's rules uh, state, which means any and all powers that we have as a municipality are derived from the legislature um, and by statute. So my question to, to Carl was, um, can you point me to a section of the statute that actually authorizes towns to have a policy with regard to flying flags or banners or any of that stuff? And he said, well, there is none. There's no specific statutory authority, but the town has the general supervision over uh, town uh, buildings and grounds, and his opinion was that that's enough to authorize boards to take to have policies like that. You know, I, I guess that's okay as far as it goes. Um, we would need to talk with our attorney as to whether or not they actually feel that that is sufficient authority. My interpretation and you know, 26, 27 years of doing this was that general authority over buildings and grounds was to basically make sure uh, the buildings had a coat of paint, their roof was fixed, the lawns were mowed, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and not, you know, not um, whether or not you can have a policy on flying flags. That's just my opinion. Um, but I, I guess the point I'm trying to make is the statutory authority for boards to undertake a policy like this is under the general qualifications of having general supervision over buildings and grounds. There's not specific statutory authority um, like there is for many, many other things that we do. Um, so for me, so the ground is a little thin. For general provisions of state statute, it says, it lists the state flag, the Green Mountain Boys flag, yada yada, right? Specific flags. Um, but then it says, sorry, I lost my spot because I was trying to scroll. Flag protocol. The Department of Buildings and Services shall adopt and update as necessary a protocol for flying, for the flying of any flag on state owned flagpole and on municipally owned flagpoles if statutorily directed. The protocol shall incorporate any existing flag flying policies or protocols that the department has previously adopted. So to me, that's very general. And it does kind of sound like we can create whatever policy we'd like. Well, when they say department, is that a state department? Yeah, they're referring to a state department. Yeah, yes. it's all state. So for that, does that mean like for the town, it would be you, you would be the department? I don't think so. We're the municipality. Um, 
Department of Buildings and General Services. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the department capitalized, Department of Buildings and General Services, all capitalized, shall adopt, blah, blah, blah. The protocol shall incorporate any existing flag flying policies or protocols that the department capitalized has previously adopted. And so, yes, I think Margo's right. I think. I think the department is whatever the governmental body is responsible for the department. Yeah, we would. There are a number of municipalities that have policies about how to determine what to apply. <coughs> Similar to this one here. Yeah. One here. Yeah, I, I borrow pretty liberally from uh, Montpelier's policy. And I guess to clarify, so we're having this conversation because a request was made to fly a particular flag, and then the conversation came to place, no, it would really be helpful to have a policy. Yeah. Basically, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I was back for the meeting a uh, few weeks ago, I understand that the request was to check in with legal and see about this like the general authority to have one. And then there would then be a broader conversation around building the policy itself. And this seems like it's moving a lot faster than what I understood the intent to be uh, a few weeks ago. So there is, I watched back our whole discussion from two weeks ago. Because uh, <laughs> I felt the need. There was a very specific point in the middle of this the discussion where we did talk about drafting a policy and did actually identify an action of draft, drafting the policy. And then we continued conversation and talked about legal. So while I still am interested in the legal aspect of it, um, which I don't mind actually reaching out myself, but I am still interested in that side, I think us talking about policies are still appropriate. I, I, I would have to say that, um, well, well, what you say is true and accurate. I also think that we did not specifically um, authorize any one person to draft the policy and bring it back to us. Um, I think a comment was made to you, Jeff, that, um, you know, you, I think you offered uh, to be part of a policy drafting and um, Express some interest in that, and I think there was a comment made that um, you know you you could be involved in that. So uh, we are where we are. We we do have some drafts in front of us, um, and that's what they are. They're drafts. What's that? That's what they are. They're drafts. So yeah. we're here to work through the drafts. Right. So if there are is feedback on any of the versions of the draft, we should speak now and let's talk about what they are. And I'd be interested in hearing board's feedback initially. So is the intent to try and adopt the policy tonight or just review the policies that we have in front of us? And Typically when we get a new document like this, we get it, we, draft, we edit away, we give feedback to Brian, he makes adjustments <clears throat> and brings it back to us. It's typically the process. So I would imagine that would apply here, but it's up to the board really. And I would suggest anything that we come to Place where the board is comfortable before we adopt it, we send it for legal review. Yes. Yes. Policies we don't always send for legal review. Uh, I would strongly <clears throat> recommend for this policy to be sent for legal review. Well, there's Supreme Court precedents. There's a lot in like, changing environment, you know, kind of changing underneath our feet. So yeah, I, I think that this would benefit from legal review and I would not recommend. So I don't, I don't think any of these are ready for adoption tonight. Personally, I, I think I've made my position very clear over the past. Uh, I could live with some wording that was somewhere in the realm of this, basically uh, no flag banner sign displays policy. I think the third paragraph on that, I would say, should be adjusted. Which page are you looking at? Which one are we looking at? The one that's the one I'm looking at the one with the supplementary. <clears throat> we have a printout of that one. You do have a printout of that one. 
Beth, your paperwork is such a mess. How do you this even is do this? Unless it's right here. Come on. Oh, here it is. No rent. It's right here. I'm getting on to my three quarters of the table. That's my discard pile that you just gave. <laughs> so you're thinking about paragraph uh, three? Third paragraph. Uh, just reads a phone key to me. I would have something more along the lines of also accepted from this policy are displayed signs, banners, etc., directly related to recreational department and Tuesday night live uh, activities for the purposes of identifying sponsors of such event or activity. Such displays shall not serve as a forum for free expression of public. Of public. Something more along those lines, the first part of it. Um, so I just want to make sure I'm getting a temperature check. So I'm hearing, and you've been clear, so I don't know that I need you to confirm this, but you're saying state and, and federal only. Largely. United States and Vermont only. Largely. Largely, with the exception of recreation. I think we Vermont. absolutely need to make some accommodations for Tuesday Night Live and recreational programs. And, you know, I mean, that could, that could, I, I don't think we should limit it to, to Jack and Tuesday Night Live, but that's why I'm suggesting town sponsored activities or events because skate park committee could. Well, skate park is also there, right? Yeah. Okay. But that's right. almost not okay. even a flag or banner, that's a paid advertisement. Um, and you're um, of the same mind, sounds like? Probably, yeah. Uh, the, the US or Vermont flag. Other than some Tuesday Night Live, I can see where we want to be promoting that. Are you of the same mind? I am supportive of the US and Vermont flag. And again, I feel as though that's paid advertising. No, no, no he's talking about the Tuesday Night Live. And, yeah. and REC, it's not even really an exception. It's I agree that paid it's advertisement has a banner. For advertising purposes, it's not the rec committee coming up with their own flag. It's an article. It's advertisement purposes. It's not allowed to sell advertisement slots so that because they're self-funded, right? Yeah, but there might be an organization or an entity that would sponsor a program. For example, Hunter Safety. Program, um, you know, that could be sponsored by the recreation department, but run or operated by the NRA. Um, should should they be able to display a sign that said "Hunter Safety" by, you know, provided compliments of NRA? You're saying if they paid for the advertising space. Should they be allowed to? Yeah, or or they might not even pay for it. It might be that they offered it. Alan Perkins used to provide, uh, you know, hunter safety training here in this building. Um, he didn't charge, you know, he didn't pay the, the town anything for that. It was the town offered him a space to provide the hunter safety training. Um, but it was sponsored or approved by, you know, act of the select board. So it was, you know, it was a participation or a sponsorship of a particular thing that money may not have exchanged hands for. It might not have been a paid advertisement. But that would have been uh, it's still sponsoring an event. Well, it would be an official display posting our notes. But okay, I need to so get the rest of the temperature is fine. Distracted. Yeah, it's okay. <clears throat> so, what are your? I mean, yeah. So, what are your thoughts? I'm more aware that I'm not truly really clear. Yeah. And um, I think, but there's two. I think the first one, the long one. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I still think that um, maybe we want to um, also talk about what's a temporary. It seems as though we allow temporary things in our right of way. 
contemporary science banner. Uh, contemporary a week or the whole summer or yeah. you know. <clears throat> Regardless, regardless of which way we go, that question probably needs to be addressed. Uh, well, well, political science, and yet the state doesn't. Isn't there an existing statute? Yeah. 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 No, no, in our right away. The state won't allow them on a state highway. They always pick them up, but on town highways, we never. I, I mean. For election day, I think people stuck them in the yard here. Yeah, you know, I don't. They're not supposed to. Yeah. I mean, stand with one of those. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, there was at least one that we had to clean up from uh, here. Um. Yeah. I mean, just my. I'm with Mark. I think that. <clears throat> I think it doesn't hurt to show support for communities. I think we don't have probably as much support as we should for using our flagpoles to do so, but I do think there are other methods that we can support banners and flags um, just generally. And if we don't want to hang up the building, fine. If we don't want to hang up the flagpole, fine. But I have to say that I was in London for Pride Weekend and the number of Pride flags they had flying through the Soho area was impressive. And it was really cool to be in a major city that was like so supportive of a really big community. So I think it's kind of sad that we're not there. Um, but that being said, I also wanna make sure that we're covering ourselves legally which is why I think we should have a policy of some sort, whatever it means, because I don't want to find ourselves in a position of <clears throat> a lawsuit that we can't back legally. So more of a risk aversion. It seems to me that other towns, you know, not sure there are other towns that are ahead of us on this. Talk to the league, talk to our attorney. Uh, you know, some towns that are flying all kinds of banners for yeah. Burlington, go there. I just wanted to remind us of the um, opinion that they adopted the use of the statement, stating in part that um, there was no purpose or understanding, ensuring that all who live, work, and visit our town feel welcome and safe, and to reject racism, bigotry, discrimination, violence, and hatred in all its forms. And one of the ways that we can do that is by visiting public displays for communities that have historically experienced bigotry, racism. So that's really the main reason why the racial justice and social equity committee is continuing to ask why it was this way. Um, I think the policy workaround is um, one that I've asked for the week or opposed to it personally. I think to just keep it accountable in terms of how it helps support the policy. Yeah, I want to make it very clear that I'm not opposed to. Flying a pride flag. It's the pride flag just happened to be the one that came wrong <clears throat> and prompted the question. Um, that's not my issue. My issue is should we be doing it regardless of whether it's pride or, uh, you know, the American Nazi Party or the KKK or all kinds of things that we might not want to see displayed? I, I just don't personally feel comfortable as an individual board member making a decision in support of any cause, um, any cause, regardless of how much I might personally believe in that cause, um, on behalf of the town. That's, that's my concern. And my other concern is the specific language of the Supreme Court decision. And that language makes it crystal clear that if you have a policy that allows you to fly flags or authorize flags to be flown, then you are in essence saying that flying those flags is a representation of government speech versus private speech. 
And that's, that's essentially what the, the court case turned on with Shurtleff versus the uh, Boston. And if you're allowing it as government speech, you're in essence saying, you know, that you condone that. And if you, if you pick and choose what you want to allow to be flown, I'm uncomfortable with that. You know, so, just uncomfortable. Um, this, I assume this came from a parade. Did I hear you say that? One of these? Yeah. yeah. And so I, I love the idea of that we're even considering this. So thank you. And that whatever gets drafted, that it would go to legal, <clears> right? And so they would be able to kind of sit through the various decisions, state, federal, Supreme, to see if we're like risking. In this, in terms of like, you know, the Nazi flag or others, like, yeah, that would be, be tough to see. In this policy, it's, you know, whether the flag or display is free of, of association with recognized hate groups. So that would take that particular thing out. Whether the flag or display you know, promote unity and community. That's a value. Yeah, but it's a value. I guess it's a value. It would be a value of, I'm hoping of our elected officials, that decisions would be uh, in sort of going like towards hate or towards unity, acceptance, community. I know that's these are your values. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so I'll step, sorry, step back, uh, and then do the work, finish the work, and then I, I do get the legal piece, I see, I see that too, so that none of us here are lawyers, mm -hmm. so, um, so that's that, and then before I keep my mouth, um, if we're doing this, it, does the village need to do it as well? Mm -hmm. And so, for this building, well, no. They don't supply it depends tools. on what policy we go by. Yeah, the village won't supply tools anyways, but this because if they supplementary have... material says in the case of buildings or properties jointly owned by the town and village of Johnson, this policy, as well as any duly adopted policy of the village, blah, 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 okay. blah shall apply unless there is a joint policy adopted by both municipalities, which addresses jointly owned properties or buildings. Okay. And that language could go on any of it. So, um, yeah. yeah. That's understandable. Yeah, and I think maybe the same thing Duncan said, you know, it should be clear that what our personal feelings are. Um, you know, I, I made it very clear that when the Black Lives Matter approached the town about putting a banner or a flag here, that I did not support any flags or banners, and that's I'm consistent with the pride. Uh, I did, and I'm I'm starting to think that maybe that was a mistake. I did support the Black Lives Matter banner that was across our highway, but in doing so, I'm getting back into that picking and choosing, and if we support. The Black Lives Matter banner across the highway, and we deny someone else, that's what gets us in trouble like Boston in a lawsuit. So, so I'm almost getting to the other extreme where I, I don't even want to support banners or, or flags across the highway right away anymore. I, I'm afraid once we open that Pandora's box, where we could end up. That's where I'm at. I mean, I would say that this stuff is okay. I certainly have made hard decisions. Mark, I didn't, I can't, I can't understand what you're saying. I've voted and made harder decisions than this. And when I was in the legislature, so I, I'm not shy about going forward. I would like to know the legality of it, but clearly other, other cities are doing it in this country and in this state, so, and they're making calls, and that's what we get the big bucks for. The, the difference between the, when you were in the legislature is the buck didn't stop with you. 
you know, you were one chamber, another chamber had to vote, and then it was the governor that signed it and all of that. Whereas here- So you're not the governor, that's what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> the, the buck uh, stops with us. Well, the buck stops with me. I got a lot of- Slack. Um, over these kinds of decisions. So I think that we, we have a, um, whether I love it or not, we have a, a definite um, agreement on the approach that at least the majority of our board would like to proceed with, I think. Um, shall we proceed along those lines? Yeah, I would draft policy for the next meeting. I, I feel like, I mean, I already recommended markups to one of them. Okay, yep. Yeah. Yep, yep. I don't see how that's a bad one to go with. It already answered certain questions. Do you know what his markups are? Uh, I think I could use a refresher, but I think Evan and I can talk about that. We can, and then bring it back to the board. Yeah. Fine. Well, just for the elements of time, could we have it reviewed by the attorney before it's brought back? Or do we think we're going to change it? Uh, well, if we know we're going to suggest changes, we should just make them before they go out, I think. current suggested changes are to paragraph three. Say something along the effect of also accepted from this policy, our display sign banners, uh, et cetera, directly related to Town of Johnson's recreation events and Tuesday night live events for the purposes of identifying sponsor of such event or activity. Such displays shall not serve as a forum for free expression of the public. I think we just strike that last line, and I would just offer that the first line is exceptions to this policy. Exceptions to this are to the above. Recreational advertising. We already said we're playing favorites with educational facilities around here. Okay. I don't, you said that. Everybody didn't say that. You said that. Recommended changes. Would you like to grab an exception for somebody else? Yes. I actually would like to see the college seek the permission from the state. I would prefer that. I mean, they're I one state that. entity. They should be able to get approved from another state entity. Take your tax dollars. They're talking about like their permission. Yeah, their their banners they have for welcome back students and commencement. I just the, with the university being at such a place that. You know, I'm hoping that we are at a place where there's going to like increase, improve town gown relationships. Like, how can we help each other out? Like, how can they help our village out? How can we add college So, I would help them try to get the. No, I agree with Margo. Like, why are we putting red tape on things? Why do we have to make things difficult? We're not playing favorites. We're supporting the people who reach out. And if we're going to, if we're making exceptions to, if we're saying no to people, when they're asking for the same thing that somebody else asked for, then we're playing exceptions. But I've not seen us do that as far as long as I've been on the board. So are we really playing exceptions or are we just supporting the community when they reach out? And what types of things are we approving when we're approving things? If somebody wanna to ask to advertise something, why wouldn't we allow for them to advertise whatever it is that they wanna advertise? Well, it's hard to paint the exact scenario, but clearly as we point there and I don't think that there would be support for them from community members to buy something there. But they haven't um, asked. The, the studio center hasn't asked, but if they did, then say they had a program going that was not something the town would want to support. We cannot sit here and say we support this educational portion of the town, but we don't agree with what you're doing for this, so we're just not going to buy it. No. We have to support every educational banner that goes up there. If somebody starts a very controversial school on the other side of Johnson and wants to fly a banner over there two years from now, 
Well, for the example, a religious used. store. I didn't say anything about religion. But that that was that, that was the basis of the Boston. It was the basis case. of the Boston flag. Yes. Religion. And you cannot support one entity, especially when they're in the same genre, if you will, without supporting another one. That's partially why I made a motion to send a bill to the state, because the town's not supporting the long trail right away. We're playing favorites over there. That's you do. Good. I, I don't have to I try to be impartial. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's, that's where right. we get in trouble when we play favorites. If Team Challenge asked for a banner up there, would you grant? I don't know anything about that. Are they public? Are they public? Maybe that's a way around it. What do you do with things like, um, not, I don't know the answer to this, but Red Cross Blood Drive, are they, are they public or are they a non profit? Uh, you know, they're public. Is it public? 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 Is it we do the budget. Oh. Well, it's true. And the budget That's why we're a board. Order, so if you would, if you would like this, the allocation of funds within the budget is approved by us. So we do make judgment calls all the time. Uh, I've never been aware of the budget at town meeting how I would like to. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to get with Walter. But now I um, OK, so where are we going with this? So I propose changes. Yeah. Evan has a few specific changes. I think there's a lot of words missing that uh, we've kind of discussed without having a specific resolution to it. About I, I heard a lot of your concerns, uh, and I don't have specific language to propose that solves it right now. Mm -hmm. So I think working on another version of this is kind of the appropriate thing to do. Uh, and it sounds like there's enough disagreement. I don't know if it's disagreement or just enough open questions that maybe we do want to review it again before we send it to the attorney. Well, I was going to ask, would it be worth that one paragraph uh, throwing it in front of our attorney for exceptions? Would we say a carve out the Johnson uh, what is the college called now? Uh, Vermont, State State University. Vermont State Johnson. University carve out exception for flying their banners and the sentence. And you know, it'll shut out Flare Away or Studio Center or anybody else. And, and that's a question I don't have the answer. I'm wondering yeah. if we wanted to have that kind of language in to help with what Mark's trying to support the college. Well, can we do it? Is their general support of sending, you know, just that paragraph over with the one exemption to the attorney? I mean, I think they'll have to see the whole thing to see how it all fits together, but. Well, there was two exemptions, right? And they're both for advertisement purposes. Yeah. yeah. So you're proposing a third. Well, I'm saying let's see if we even can do that. Yeah, just, just have an question. Yeah. I mean, the, the attorney may come back and say, whoa, if you do that, and you're opening yourselves up for a Boston case. I don't know. I just asked a question for clarification. What is what you're looking at right now? Is that basically saying the American flag, state flag, and like basically Public. nobody else except for uh rep committee? Town sponsored events and advertisements is essentially what it is. Well, so with the racial justice, we're town, I'm not on it, but it's a, a town committee. We are selected by the, the boards. So wouldn't anything that they do be a 
I think if they did an event, it would be appropriate in this case. Yeah. Well, on recommendations are not town sponsored events. You're paying favorites? Is that what you're telling us? No. I'm <laughs> no, saying if you want to sell if you want to sell advertisement space, so right, I haven't been approved at all. If you want to sell advertisement space at an activity, that's fine. It is not a representation of government stance, government language, government speech. So if Lois and the committee and the, that commission wanted to for Earth Day do uh you know do the globe, you know, the sort of flag. Yeah. Birthday flag or banner, or there's actually a more political birthday. We actually have an arboreum banner. So right? would that be like, or the historical society if they had something? I just, I just don't. I just want to kind of save us you from going down this path where it's like, huh, well, there's absolutely no banners. We are the bannerless town, with the exception of American flag, the state flag, recreation, and the college. Well, and well, Tuesday night live. Tuesday night live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're already multiple ways down. Okay. Yeah. So it seems really ridiculous to me. I'm just going to say it that we pick out specific groups that we're willing to sponsor that are town sponsored committees and not others. Why in the world would we do that? I, I'm fine with shaving them, um, but they're not going to get any advertisement revenue from their budget. And we have to make those the tax there. It was just advertisement space. That's How would said. okay? Why would we not allow for handing up hanging a banner for a town committee's event? That makes no sense to me. If they want to have an event and sell advertisement space, you could word that paragraph. So you could have a big banner across the street with some little things sponsored by MSI. MSI. Is Tuesday Night Live ever put a banner up? No, but they've got well, like I mean, I don't know which what you call it banner, but you know, in front of the bandstand, they have signs. There's a whole they listing of Johnson people. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my intent of trying to craft a or you know a policy that would at least allow that sort of thing. You know. The, then we got to the, the initial one was just in Brian, you know, made made comment that um, you know that that initial one was just recreational, um, you know, so sponsorships. Basically, the carve out is because they are a whatever Johnson Farm and Garden is a sponsor. Yeah, it's a sponsor. if the KKK. Sponsored some of Tuesday Night Live. Want to put a sign up? We could not deny it. Anybody could make it happen. That's that's where you get in trouble. Like so I'm kind of fine after talking about it. That's striking that whole thing. I am totally not fine with that. It is ridiculous that we can't hang a sign to support a event for the the conservation or rec is holding registration or whatever yeah. like how why in the world rec. do we have these committees why do we have all these volunteers if we're not going to uh, if we're not going to help them get the word out about whatever their event is what would be the point rec no forget rec i'm not calling rec out specifically i'm saying any town group including racial justice if they want to have a party they would have a block party somewhere legion field they have a block party to celebrate indigenous people day why would we not help them put the sign up saying that event is happening i mean you're going into signs and this is specifically about okay banner <laughs> like I mean, use your there word is, there is kind of a difference there i guess the well a display covering a lot Display does have a lot. We could change this tool. I call us. You guys are on the wrong side of history. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I understand where you're coming from, and I appreciate it. If, if, for example, the Recreation Committee wanted to sponsor a, a gay pride day and hold the event at Lee, at, at old, you know, old Duckman Field, um, wouldn't that be okay? 
you know, could they put up a banner that um, said this event is being sponsored by whoever? favorites we cannot say no that is specifically what boss with flying a flag i agree which is why we're talking about drafting a policy so it's clear in our policy what the process would be i hope for our country's sake there are ways to draft a policy that talks about growth and improving improving our communities and discarding hate, whatever you want to define as hate, there are definitions, there are legal definitions. Why couldn't we use those as the foundations for a policy we draft? It doesn't make any sense to me. We have these things in place at our federal level. So why can't we reference those federal guidelines and federal laws that are in place around hate to help draft our policies for what we would allow and not allow? And I am still worried about the legal aspect of it, for sure I am. But when we start talking about picking out town committees that we're gonna support and others we aren't, like, holy cow, that line moved pretty far away from protecting ourselves legally. I think that was very clear. It was not in support of any specific town committee. If I wasn't, I'm sorry. It was in support of advertisement space for money in, money out organizations, any town committee for hosting up. If John's Farm Garden wants to pay you X number or whatever at your event, I think that's a great fundraising opportunity. Um, that's where I was going. I'm sorry if I, no, I, think, I did specifically this. So yeah. I, uh, I think yeah. we're discussing business this. Yeah, I think, I mean, if you really understand why I'm here for the way out, that's why I'm Jeff, can you speak up? I'm sorry. Yeah, as Beth was referencing, there are a lot of examples, federal, state, municipal level, of government buildings, government entities, flying flags in support, whether it's pride, Black Lives Matter, or somewhere. That I think there is ground, you know, there's there's possibility of being able to assess the guidelines like that, and that's just what I'm asking the board to be open to. Is that there, there may be a path that would allow, okay, if it's you know the group can't be on the FBI's you know list of hate groups, right? <laughs> the 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 group that wants to fly a flag can't be on you know. A terrorism watch list, right? You, like we can put things like that into place that don't even don't even make it about whether we like the group. We can put it in the hands of sort of experts in those matters, and then say, and and have it come through town entities. And that's all I've been proposing from the beginning is to just asking to explore policy directions that this allows, um, you know, to make federal support. I don't think we're any further than we were. So, can yeah, I offer? Please. Uh, I want to go back to the first policy, one on page 19. Uh, it's not the first draft, but uh, kind of the first one is back. It lays out a set of criteria for when something gets approved. And in this case, the language says that it has to meet all of these criteria. We can add to that list of criteria that things need to be approved, but right now I attempted to have pretty neutral language about you know what those criteria needs to be. I think that this would allow us to do all of the things that everybody's saying they want to be able to do. And the folks that aren't comfortable with displaying uh for lack of a better phrase, uh, a message or a cause related displays would also have the ability if they felt just with the criteria here, 
if you felt that a flag was divisive, it did part E, the flag displays and promotes unity and community. If it doesn't do that, and you believe that it doesn't, you have grounds to deny it. That I think that having the criteria laid out for this is when we approve something is the best way for us to be protected rather than trying to craft very specific exemptions about, you know, we're going to allow Tuesday Night Live, we're going to allow the college, but we're not going to allow X or Y. If everybody has to meet the same set of criteria, that yeah, some of these are value judgments, but I think that as as elected officials, you can, you know, if you don't believe that any cause flag is promoting immunity, that's a perfectly reasonable position to take. What, what I don't want to do, Brian, is spend 45 minutes at a board meeting every time this question comes up, evaluating a proposal against these criteria. I, I just think that's a waste of our time. So I, I, I cannot support the, this draft in its current format, for sure. No, I, that's just me. Feel can, the same way. can we delegate that to Brian? Can we just delegate it to him? I, we could, but I don't want to. Sorry. <laughs> and I don't want to buy it uh, as not an elected that's official. <laughs> so that's tough. So you don't really want to be like in that, the weeds for 40 minutes, but then you want to be part, you want to be part of that decision. That I, just heard. I, I, I want to try and craft a policy which is um, allows as much of what Beth was talking about of community building as possible in the context of um, a, a policy where I don't have to sit down every time a proposal comes before us and spend 45 minutes debating whether it's in the best interest of the so, community or what. Duncan, if we, okay, just hear me out and I understand your earlier position so but just hear me out for a second if we took some of the criteria that's listed in the sub bullets here and part of the um, you know we don't consider this ready board ready until you've addressed each one of these items as to why before coming to the board like why or how you can prove that you're not in a hate group you can prove that your um, display promotes community and unity, whatever. But basically they essentially have a form to fill out to describe the why behind each of these. And then we're not spending 45 minutes in a board meeting. Because the reality is we spent a lot of, we've spent a lot of board time over the past two years, three years, frankly, since uh, George Floyd died, talking about this kind of thing. Um, and my guess is that we're going to continue to because it's real. It's in our world today, these types of things. Um, but would having something that is about a form change your view? I sincerely doubt that having somebody fill out an application form is going to significantly change the amount of time that we spend reviewing that application. Okay. Well, I, I, I am, I guess where, I guess if I had to try and quantify it, I would say the only two flags that we fly are the American flag and the state of Vermont flag, as far as banners, signs, displays, et cetera. I'm more willing to have an open discussion about how that might look. Okay. 
So I'm literally like thinking, what's what is the next step? Is what I'm thinking because I don't feel like there's still a concrete next step. I think if Brian goes away and does makes any of these changes, I'm pretty sure he's going to come back for an export meeting, <laughs> and I'm going to say, well, why didn't you do that? And Evan's going to say, well, you did that, but not my thing. That's right. So, yeah, that's <laughs> right. I think there's got the pleasure to do that. Actually, you called that very specifically by name. Yeah, I don't think it's um, fair to Brian to send I, him off to try and come up with a draft based on what we discussed tonight. I'm fine <clears throat> with sending the added material with the third paragraph completely removed. Not for legal review. There's a lot clearer than me when we were, and when it was brought to us. We were talking about buildings, this building in particular, and I just do not feel it's appropriate to have any other flag or banner or anything like that on this building. The town owned building it represents the town. And I always thought it was just the US flag or the Vermont flag it should be on this building. What's getting it a lot murkier is. Okay, we make a policy for the town. How does it affect the, you know, what the Tuesday night law? Is it a, the college banner? Is it, it's why. The non realism? It was not where we started. The majority so of our committees are going to come before the board. We go through any policy. Let's hope not. That's true. <laughs> So are we talking only about flags at this point on the flagpoles or no? Because we don't even own any flagpoles. Flag so are we talking about flags on our building? Like I said, my whole thing was this building, I did not want to see any banners or any flags other than if the US for some reason was going to be attached to the tower. Okay. But, uh, so we don't have flagpoles, but I, I just, in my mind, I would not support anything other than the U.S. flag. It's pretty simple when I thought of it that way. Now we're getting complicated. I don't like the idea of flying a banner off the building anyway. <laughs> it's, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look professional. So. I feel like the building, you would agree, the building, I assume. What do you think about the building? You mean this, this building? particular building? Just take it off the list altogether. Yeah, I don't know how much that helps. <laughs> I don't think it helps much, but it's one less thing to worry about. I would put the building. You don't care. And you're not I, I'm not uh, worried about the thing. I've made my thoughts very clear. Okay, fine. So, so get, let's take the building off off the table. Now we're just talking, enjoy little property. Now know. we're talking property and freestanding. So and are all buildings all that or just this building? This building is the inclusivity statement in the hallway. Yes. Okay to stay there. There. Yeah, it's asking for that. A banner or flag. And it's a it's a town. I mean, the town adopted that yeah, as a policy. Right. The voters of the it's state. It's an official display. Yeah, looks like a banner. Yeah, it's not But if it's not plywood, then it's not a banner. So we can take the skills off and cut the edge. Oh, I'm just. Are you proposing we take it? Yes. No, he's making a yeah, point. He's, he's, he's trying, trying to make a point. He's <laughs> trying to make a point that when you start describing what is a flag, what is a beam, you know, you just go down these rabbit holes that go, you know, there's a piece of plywood a banner or a flag. I guess so. Well, is it a display? Is it a sign? Do you want to continue with the policy at all? Just at all? Yes or no? <laughs> go to somebody else. Okay, yes or no? <laughs> Do we want to go move forward with the policy? Yeah. Do you want to move forward with the policy? 
Can we put this on hold? Just yes or no. Just a yes or no, please. A policy on flags or flag signs, banners. Any content within this policy, do you want to move forward with the policy? Any content? I would certainly be fine. 100% fine leaving here tonight with portions of so you do want one, so yes, that's all you get to say. And would you like to proceed with the policy? I think it would come forward. Okay, regardless of what's in it right now, do you want a policy? Yep. Yeah. I think we do. Okay, we have a quorum. You don't even have to answer, Duncan. I think we should. What do you mean we have a quorum? We have one to start with. Okay, you yeah. have an hour ago. I just want to make sure everyone still wants a policy. So... Now we're back to this. Can I make a suggestion? Please. Why don't we all mark up one policy or another of what we want, meet back again, and just talk about the policy as a work as a work session item and try and hammer something out. Try and try and come out of it. I really don't think it's fair to Brian. I'm okay with that. Yep to you know, try and have him come up with drafts, try and guess what he thinks. We so might which be thinking. One are we all Reader working on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that involves a little bit of a homework assignment for all of us, but uh, I think we should probably do it. The only way we're gonna get there. I say we all start with this policy. Fine. I know, right? We're both gonna, we're all gonna say something else. So it doesn't really matter. Okay, everyone, yeah, everyone start from the additional okay. and Mark, okay. if you want to just copy and paste things into the additional, that's totally fine. I'll compile them all. I will literally do a, like you can merge Word. So please send me a Word document if you have Word or Google Doc would be fine. I'll merge them all together and, and see what blows up. <laughs> yeah. Is this but what that would essentially be a sum I would like to point out that Jason, I think, is staying for one item and it's an hour overdue. So, uh, two items. Okay, okay. so what are the two? Uh, I'm assuming the village work and the right away. That was what my guess Well, was. the word village work, what is the other one? Uh, executive session on Brian uh, litigation. Okay. Well, let's, uh, well, you know, what honestly, we have quite a we bit here. House we're going to do, sorry, we're going to do Holcomb House first, though. It's, yeah, sorry. I think we can get through I don't, I don't think there's really a way to speak it up. I think we can just be mindful of uh, how late it is. Okay, Holcomb. Holcomb House Apartment planning. Um, it's in a you know, a less than desirable state, but it has been uh, cleaned to a degree. Um, and smoke detectors are in there. I think we're ready to tell the, you know, historical society that we want you know, their feedback on, on their planning for the future use of it. So we just left we... it that way at the last meeting. Uh, I think we did too, but just to be really clear, last meeting we talked about how we know it wasn't sufficiently cleaned. Right. It needs to be cleaned. But we more. wanted to know what their use is going to be before we did anything else. Yeah, patching walls. Well, it was also talk about repairs. Yeah. And I think we, I, know. I asked for this item to be put on. And if maybe the simplest way to do this is for me to make a motion, and motion would be to have a cleaner come in um, and do some level of cleaning, you know, at a minimum vacuuming uh, and, and washing the floors and, you know, getting some of the dust out. I mean, I've got some pictures if you want to see them. It's not, it's not a great situation. And I think it's, I think it's unreasonable to ask the historical society to go into a place that when I got out of there, I felt like I wanted to take a shower. To be honest with you. It's like a toxic waste though. So what is your motion? My motion would be to have um, some level of cleaning uh, perform additional level of actual cleaning. W what I think was done was trash removal. It was almost exclusively trash removal. 
There was. Yeah, you know, there really was no cleaning per se done. You know, what I mean, the, the yeah. dust is that thick on the floor. I mean, it's it's a it's a pink belt. Carpet should be either cleaned or put that. If somebody's right. I want to put a small picture. If it's hot in there, you would smell it on you after you were outside. Mm -hmm. It's like a toxic waste dump. Gross. It, it really <laughs> is. I mean. Okay, so what is your motion? My motion would be to have. What does some level of cleaning mean? Like a banner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hang a banner out the window and clean it. So um, what would be most helpful for me with arranging this cleaning is a dollar. Uh, and do you have an idea of how much money we have left out of the original budget? Security deposit. Uh, the security deposit. No. We spent all of it. God, yeah. Oh no. But regardless, yeah. So we have none. Up to four hundred bucks. Up to uh, how much was the? What was the labor rate at the? Uh, we spent uh, I think like six hundred twenty dollars. Uh, it was twenty dollars an hour. So up to eight hours of cleaning at a maximum of twenty-five dollars an hour. Okay. Can we have a motion to have a second? I'll second that. We have a second. Any discussion? I would, I would raise the number. I do have a discussion point. You mentioned Pascal and his horse. I did take a look there, and I was not meeting two weeks ago, but Alan is not asked them to go in there. We asked. Them, we asked them for a plan. We asked them for a report and a plan. So we're cleaning it so that they can go get a plan and come back with some sort of. Well, when we left the report, cost analysis and the report. There, uh, they are. Looking. So the whole come. I heard from Mary Jean, and they are intending to present a plan to us in September. That's the so maker. That's how we left the meeting last time was to ask them what their intentions were because that would determine what we would invest in repairs, cleaning, etc. I haven't well, seen a plan yet from among what they're going to do with the space. The way I remember it, when we first motioned to not renew the contract with the tenants, is that there was going to be. Comprehensive cost analysis of the basis. I have to go back to my Yeah, you weren't at the last meeting, but we we spent all of the money that was part of the rent right. deposit. And so we left it at before we do any further work. We wanted to hear back from the it was good enough for the uh, service society to go in. Uh, and report back what their intention was with it. If it was just going to be for some storage, and we would do one level of cleaning and repairs, and um, if they're intending to want to make it open to the public, there would be another level of cleaning and repair. Have I missed it all together? Now decided that they completely want to get rid of it. We haven't decided that. We have not decided that. All we, no, we're just asking what their intention would be and having them present it so we can discuss what our options are. It, it's basically us weighing our options. And they're coming back and saying that they can't do the assessment because it's not clean. Okay, gotcha. Because you can't breathe. Which, which I would suggest that any board member who has any questions about my motion do a site visit and walk through it. <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Do I have a second? Two seconded? Yeah. Two seconded. Okay, we're discussing it. Go ahead. I, I, I did an initial site visit, and I think your, your, your number for cleaning is low. But I'll support it right where it is. Well, it, it, it could well be low. I mean, you know, I think a, a good eight hour, a good eight hours of cleaning could make a big difference yeah. up there. Yeah. You know, I personally I wouldn't spend a, a lot of time on the carpets because they're they're tubs as far as I can. Yeah. That's, a, I agree. that's kind of the problem.
problem we're at is so much of it is I mean, we spend the money we had and yeah, the carpets need work, the walls need work. It's unrentable, for sure. Yeah. That's the way it is. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, are we ready to vote? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Were you thinking about it? I was. Okay. I was wondering why we're going to clean the carpet. It should be ripped out. I don't think we should. Yeah. I, I think they could vacuum them just to get the, you know, just to get the one inch of dirt off them. But I wouldn't spend a okay. lot of time. Okay, motion passed. Is there anything else about the apartment we need to discuss right now? We're gonna hear from Mary Jane. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Okay, uh, village working the right of way. All right, so. We had an issue with um, miscommunication between our employees, the village employees, and I guess a contractor for the village. Excuse me, about properly filling out the work in the right of way permit before they uh, crossed underneath our road on Road West. Um, We've spoken to the village about it, and you know they're pretty understanding about what our position is. Uh, you know, had a pretty good meeting with Jason and Nate about you know what we expect and, and the level of you know basically servicing existing poles and things are is one thing, but installing a new pole uh, and especially crossing underneath roads or affecting anything that, uh, that could affect our roads or the flow of water in a right of way absolutely needs a permit. Uh, but they, yeah, this is just, it's already happened. They've already gone underneath the road. Uh, and it was a, a mistake on, on their part. Uh, more informational than really seeking a resolution on it. Or, uh, work with the right way policy is good. And like I said, we had a very productive meeting with the uh, village group. Did they dig up the road? Did they put in a fight? So yes. And, you know, I mean, that under our policy, that's supposed to be inspected as yes. they're doing that um, after they've done it. Uh, security deposit, all that good stuff. Any Has any of that been done? Uh, they didn't. Originally, follow any of it. Yep. Nate was on occasion. Jeff came with me, asked me what he needed. I give him a right away permit and the uh, deposit form I have for a deposit, filled it all up for him. That's like, I was like, the contractor will have to come see me. It's Thursday or so. Yeah. Monday, I checked with Nate on the radio. I was like, how's that permit come along? Like, they said they were going to be out of there Tuesday. I said, they're delaying. Yeah, it's all done. Then they wanted my signature, and I went to talk to Brian. I told him I wasn't signing off on something I wasn't even a part of. That's a smart guy. Yeah. Is that is that where it stands now? Or? Yeah, that's yeah. still it's done. And I'm, unless you guys make me sign off on it. No, you should not. No, sign no off. I, I totally support you. No, no, I think you're 100 percent right. Where on the road west? Uh, down by the falls. Or did it disturb the asphalt? I guess. Oh, yeah, they don't the asphalt. How big a pipe? Possibly. I don't know the diameter. They didn't tell us that was all stuff that was required on the drawing when I never got it. So I don't have any of those records now for the future knowing. I think we should say we still need the information because we need to be able to file that. Um, so we have no hold on it. If we're not getting the form back from the crew, maybe Nate could help with that. Uh, but if we're not getting it back from the crew, we should ask Rosemary. And if need be, you know, let me know. And I'm happy to reach out to Steve if I need to. Okay. So we're getting the, the application, all the information that we would need uh, kind of backfilled. We're going to get the uh, deposit that Jason had asked for originally from the village. If it's just a deposit, don't we return deposits? We do after one year. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, for something like this, 
uh, we have the option of uh, requesting a deposit for work that we have uh, reason to believe could have uh, a failure point that we can't see today. Sure. So we collect the deposit so that we can make the repairs ourselves if we need to, you know, in the spring. That's really what we're thinking is that, you know, how well does it survive the winter? Uh, so we can make the repairs when we need to. Did they <coughs> patch it with pavement? Yeah, um, they put pavement and I don't know how much Nate said it's supposed to fix what they took out. Don't know they they put in, they could have put clay in for all the high no, I mean, we could require a, he selects a sample boring that has to be done or dig a little bit of a hole so we can see what's down there. Yeah. Before that be you sign it. I would like to know, you know, if it's when they're doing the baby stuff and now they're doing four samples of, you know, for compaction, being that we got that road slid and we paved it, it'd be nice to know that it's. Personally, I would like to see it. Okay, let's let the board understand about that, but I think that sounds like a good idea for requirement. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that we need a motion, just ask for it. We we'll support you in it. Yeah, I would like a small deposit. Did they give us the deposit? Uh, I believe that they have, and I have to check with Rosemary about that to make sure that it's actually held uh, properly for us. But Rosemary and Steve know that that was part of our request. Uh, and yeah, I, I, I don't think you ever got the answer, and I, I didn't, about whether that had actually been withheld or not. Yeah, I don't. My biggest thing when I come to Brian about this is the village crew themselves, they did. And they technically were supposed to, but somehow I don't know how all the work is done. I don't know how to locate it. Someone we told him that Steve gave some agreement. I don't know if he did or didn't, but it's my biggest thing that makes me upset about it is that we hold I compared to everybody else to a standard when they're doing this, but the communities can well, we can work together, but it doesn't seem like there was communication at all on that whole project. Going forward, it would be nice if we could all know what was going on for everybody's records for future and what was going on in the road. But just what I'd like to see. Yeah, you know, it's a town on my way. <clears throat> you have a permit process. And yeah, we can do everything up to requiring them to pick up the whole thing and do it over again. Maybe we should. One, two, three, one, a number. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I hear you on the communication. You can't tell somebody else to communicate, but you can you can certainly encourage it, and we can too. So. Well, the communication part would be to pretend to let you know when they were digging, so I could go see the holes. No, I I hear you. That's yeah. What I meant. I don't yeah, know. I know. I know. You know. <laughs> I mean, that's just normal practice. When they're paving, they come get you and you do an inspection as they're proceeding. I mean, when you do follow up to ask for the boring or whatever, that you could say, you know, um, next time it may be easier next time if you let me know and I'll do my best to get down here when you're actually digging. This whole application process, there's an appendix A that is them asking for the work. Then they have to get appendix B before they can even proceed to the work. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's right. <laughs> yeah, we have a greatly improved process yeah. where we someone applies, they get a notice to proceed, and then once the job is inspected, they get their permit. Yeah, they get a final appendix C, which is a sign off, but I give them that oh you know get it right. Yeah. It beats our standard. Yeah, this failed before the first step. Yeah, they never even saw it. I mean, does it feel like if, well, maybe this is unfair. I'm going to ask anyway. Go does ahead. it feel like if Nate was not on vacation, it would have been different? No. Okay. It has nothing to do with the 
still the employee themselves, or somehow the contractor got to keep. Oh, 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 I see. I don't know what happened. I can't, I can't say, but I know that Jeff was in charge because everything he could to come. I mean, he come got the two papers he needed, and I took them out. So I don't know how all the work got okay to even start. I see. I see. Okay. Uh, that makes it a little bit different because we should give the trustees a proper, like, I don't know if they, do they know the whole situation? Either of you know? I don't know. I don't know how well informed they are. I know that Steve, uh, at least broadly familiar with it, he came in and signed the permit application. After yeah, that's not the same as them understanding, though. Yeah. Um, so I think we should, if uh, I think we should follow up actually with what happened and what the expectation of the their contractor was, and that that didn't happen, and put it in writing and just send it to Steve, just as you know, FYI, we have a process, and this is the process, and your contractor doesn't seem to have followed it. Um, and we wanted to, we just want him to inform him for the future, and we're trying to rectify it now. Uh, but I think it's only fair for us to give that, you know, very clear feedback that that's the expectation so that they can learn if they don't know. Yeah, we need to be a little bit careful about that because we don't know what the contract between the village and the contractor was. Sure. The contractor could have made the village responsible for obtaining any and all permits. Fair enough. Yeah. And if they did, then it's a failure on the part of the village. Yeah. So either way, giving yeah. them the feedback that we don't know where the disconnect, disconnect was, but that there was. But there one. was. Yeah. Yeah. Will you feel comfortable signing off if you've done a test tool? Not only for protection in that one spot, but you never know what they did at the joint. You know, they're going to be paid enough to where they're going to be testing on where I don't want to sign off. I don't want to sign off because it wasn't done right. Right. How much money is that road specifically going to cost? I know we okayed an allotment of money, but that was a portion of the work, not all of it. Do you remember the links? I, I don't remember the exact number, but I know that that's the most expensive thing over the two. Because they're going to grind they're gonna, all of that. They're going to re put, reclaim it and put material down. Put material on it. Well, that might help. I'm tempted to say that the village needs to take that back up and have a properly inspected. The taxpayers of the town are going to invest a lot of money in it. That they want it signed off on. They need to do the, this process properly. We can't keep. It was an independent homeowner that did it, and we were putting the taxpayers' money on the line. I'd say the same thing. Speaking from my side, if it was an independent person doing it, we wouldn't give them the final permit. They wouldn't have a permit for the driveway per se, so we wouldn't go over it. So that's how we handle it. It's how I'd handle it if it was somebody private. But this was a different story. That's why Brian brought up the us. I wouldn't give them a final permit, but I would require that they dig it back. Uh, like, how wide is the cut? All the way across the road. Well, which ones? I don't. You didn't see it. I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see. Never what, you can see what they patched for paper. Yeah, I haven't been down. To be honest with you, Nate said that they patched it all in. He told me and Brian it was all set, so the whole time they didn't. Not so much wash my hands of it, but it's pointed the double well from the foot. Okay. I'd say it was probably a trench box wide after you. They were down five feet. I guess they they were in a trench box. Five so or six feet wide. Oh, that's a lot bigger than I was guessing. Okay. Do you need anything? What do you need from us? Does the board want to ask for the dig up? I think. You do? Yes. I want it dug up. Uh, they installed the inspector. I'd okay. say a minimum of a single hole. I don't think it's a reason. Do you have an opinion? I don't like making it anywhere we have. I, I think our core. And you would give them a final permit with that, or you would not, so they maintain being liable for it. That's what I'm very That's all I'm asking. I, I personally, I'm not giving them a final permit. 
The only way he would is if the select board told Are they going to do what's, what's the depth yeah. of reclamation at it? It's supposed to be going down. We're going to put six or eight inches on. I don't have my most. I'm pretty sure they're going down 12 inches. I mean, no. We could hear down 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 so I do, I mean, it would probably be okay, but I just hope that I don't want to sign out on them. I never have to see. Yeah, you didn't see where, where they even running a compactor down there. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing well, to put on the They didn't take anything. <laughs> Use the bucket. Yeah. No, it just got done. So I guess the only reason I told Brian, I, gotta, I can't, I don't feel comfortable signing off. Do you have any sense at all as to whether Jeff or they inspected it when they were? And he well, said they yeah. compacted it really well, but I don't even know if they were there. I don't know. I'm just one of the. I can't. I hear you. I can't sign off on something more that I wasn't involved in taking somebody else's work. You never gave your gut. I don't know. I don't. I would leave it to you guys. I don't know. What's yours? Under normal circumstances, I would agree with you and make it do it. Since they're going to reclaim the road and repave it and add material, I think it's probably not going to be an issue. It's it's you lost me, but because I feel like, yeah, because the material is being added and they're actually going to have more aggregate in there, it should be better. Uh, but I would not approve signing a single piece of paper unless they dug it up. Well, Eric. And Mark will say one core sample, don't sign off on a final permit. I'm assuming the village needs to pay for that sample. Okay. Thanks, they were doing the work. Okay, that's their thoughts. Mine is big enough, but that's such as well. Yep, to you. I'm, I'm okay with depending on the results of the core sample. Um, if, if he, you know, if, if it's Looks wanky. Um, then I would go with dig it up and recompact it and witness it. Um, so it sounds like the board has your support with a core sample that looks good. We will tell you to go ahead and sign off on it if the core sample looks good. No, I don't think I don't think we're signing off on it either way. That oh. was my sentence. Yeah. I would uh, uh, wouldn't sign off on it either way. Okay. Okay. It, it so not not, not, signing, not signing off on it. on it. Get the core I sample, guess. and if the core sample is wishy washy at all, in the middle. If the core sample doesn't meet compaction standards, I'm fine with giving Jason the authority to say the select board now wants you to take it up. I, I would go on. Okay. So we got three yeah. members of that. Yeah. So do a core sample. Village is paying for it. We're still not signing anything that meets. If it doesn't meet, select board wants it done. Now, is that something I'm having them stick over there? Yes. Them, but you need to be there. Yeah. They can do it, as far as I'm concerned, they can do it with their own forces if they want, as long as it's the proper material for that fill and properly. Yeah, and you get to witness it. And you witness it. Yeah, you're there. And you just pick the spot. <laughs> the, the advantage of that is, you know, if it comes to that, the advantage of that is then if you're comfortable with it, you can sign the permit and they're all good. I have no point of those. If they, if they dig it back up and, and they, they compact it, if they dig it back up and compact it, recompact it, and you're comfortable with it, you wouldn't have any reason not to sell the permit. Yeah. Okay, you good, Jason? You got what you need? What's a, yeah. What is a core sample? Is that I've only seen real core samples. Do they, are they going to do it with a backhoe? I would think they'd want to do it with a drill, like they do with on the pavement. So if they're already they drill out the pavement, now they drill down to see what the compaction is. And then, then they could do a compaction test. Okay, okay. so they pull, a core, they pull a whole core out and look at it. I, I just don't know. 
Well, it can do that another way. They can do hammer blow tests, um, you know, to measure the. You know more about that. Than I don't know about hammer blow tests. Get a big piece of equipment and smash it, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if it rattles. Appropriate thing. Yeah. I'll make my comment later. All right, we're good. We're good. Uh, okay. Um, we have one item. Is it really going to be really fast? What's enough to get in the revolving loan? Uh, it is going to be super fast. Go. Very fast. The town revolving loan fund. Uh, we have a we have a, a large fund balance, one hundred ninety three thousand uh, in the bank. We are ready to make more loans. Um, we are. We do need to. We need to make more loans. Okay, let's do an action item. Let's not talk about how we need to because we know what that means. Let's do a did you know campaign. I would recommend. Let's put some advertisements out there, put it, push it out on Facebook. But like a did you know that yeah, did you know that the town of Johnson has a revolving loan program? Here's what this could mean to you, kind of thing. You want um, an action item? Yeah, let's do it. A motion that Beth Boy and Brian Story manage some communication campaign about getting the word out that the town's revolving loan fund. Motion. Do you have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? Needs to be pointed towards the businesses. Yeah, we need to hit the business. It does. Uh, you know, we're we engineered the fund to be much easier for business expenses than totally fine. You know those details. Yep. Right on. We'll get it done. Do we have a second? Oh, yes. oh, yeah. second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I make one further suggestion? Sure. And that would be to contact uh, Agency of Commerce and Community Affairs and ask them if we can get an extension. I, I forget how many years. We're up against a, a bit of a timeline in terms of. We do need to talk to them about that. Again, they granted us an extension. They granted everybody an extension during COVID. They did. Okay. Uh, That's our we need to, you know, we probably need to up that and get a further extension. But Okay. It may, if, if we run up against the wall, it may be a, a business is out, out there that, uh, you know, they may be going through a bank or what have you, but if we approach them and ask them, they may use our money so that we aren't in jeopardy of losing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll push it out. Uh, executive session. I motion to find that. Uh, premature disclosure of a topic that could result in litigation, which the town may be a party of, and substantially disadvantage the town. Would that be the case? A motion to enter executive session as well by the one BSA 313A1, inviting Brian and Jason. Oh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yes. Uh, we have a second. All those in favor? All right. All right. Correct. Okay, ours have it, and we are in executive session at 9.54. I'm going to throw people in the room.